Hi, welcome everybody. So I'm just going to check that we're all live on the Facebook group, which we should be. And then we'll start the first session with a day with Zendler. So that's all good. Fabulous. All right, guys. So we've got uh, quite a good little roundup today. We've got, uh, I'm going to be talking about support. So I want to go into a little bit of detail about where you can find support, how you can find things as quickly and painlessly as possible. So after I've run through that, um, I should have enough time maybe for to answer some questions if you've got any questions in the chat, which I'll be monitoring. Um, we're going to then run into Kat and she's going to do how to have create confidence and making an impact with your courses or your presentation style. So after that, at 10.45, we're going to run into creating certificates. So I've already run this as a workshop and you'll have reference. And I've also released um, some custom certificates for you inside of the tutorial. So if you haven't seen that, I'm going to run through that now anyway. And I'm also going to just go in there and show you how to kind of add a logo and these sort of things and how to upload it and test it as a student as well. It's not going to take very long. And that will kind of round up session one. And then we're back in the afternoon at three, where we've got another big section to do. So let's jump straight into where you can get all the help from. So I'm going to run through this. So you guys, especially if you're new to the platform, and even if you've been on for a few months and you haven't really got on to any of the tutorials or actually searched for any of the videos, it can save you a lot of time. Because, you know, you're posting your questions up on the Facebook group that likely chances are the questions have already been answered. And the only reason that it puts people off is because there's a little bit, maybe a little bit of searching to do. We're always trying to develop these areas to make it easier. And um, we have got plans to make it even easier, but I can't talk about it at the moment. But um, there's going to be an update that's going to allow a lot of much easier to get the information without jumping around all of our hundreds of videos now remember we have got hundreds of videos but um that we probably got close to a thousand um so they are all around and they are easy to find but it's just how you search for them so i'm going to be sharing my screen and i'm going to show you just how we can do it so let me just flick into the Zoom and share my screen. All right. So it's 9 a.m. in the morning here in the UK. You know, it's starting to get towards that autumnal time. Well, it is autumn and it's starting to get colder. It's starting to get a bit darker. So um, all you guys that are maybe watching this in Australia, you're going to be going into your lovely sunshine. So very jealous. It's going to start getting cold. And where I am in particular, it's going to start getting really rainy. And we have this stuff that we call mizzle. And it's kind of a cross between mist and rain. Um, mist and drizzle and it's kind of just sits there and just soaks you so it's not a good time but uh, anyway push forwards we do get lovely sunny days as well so uh right so we're on our group we're on our tutorials.newzenla page now so if you are new to this it's tutorials.newzenla.com make sure you type that in there and then you can jump in and take part in the main workshop. So on this page, I'm going to run through the top part. First of all, we've got latest live events. So this is all live events that are coming your way. So we always have like a day with Zen. Uh, it's always the last Friday of the month. And it runs from 9 a.m. to 12 a.m. And then runs a second session at 3 till 6 p.m. This is BST time. So it covers pretty much all the time zones, you know, if we run in it for a whole day. So then we have here, we have live builds uh, with Zenda. So um, we pick an instructor and they ask us for a particular problem and we do a live build. So these two are streamed straight into the Facebook group. It's where you're watching this one now. 
Uh, we also have live events running. So we have a live event um, running at a different time. I used to run these live events at 4 p.m. BST time, but now to capture that um, Southern Hemisphere zone, we're running this at 9 a.m. So the same time as now, and it will be running to, um, consecutively. So every Sunday we'll run this. There might be a few skip Sundays if, if I'm away or something, but um, or I want to give you more time to get through that part. But what my plan is here is to run through all the workshops I've already done. So these cover building a site, these cover building your co first course and understanding it. These also run into things like setting up funnels to attract people in there. Um, talking about freebies, talking about the marketing side as well, talking about some of the programs that you might want to use outside of Zenla to make amazing images, to produce your videos, you know, the importance of videos, uh, the importance of setting up Facebook groups or social groups of some kind, social media in general. And it's quite good. And we're going to flip it around a little bit. So um, we are going to change it up a little bit from what we've already run. Uh, every time we try to improve on something, we don't want to repeat something time and time and time again we're trying to move forwards we're not trying to stagnate so new skill new things come out um, we feature those in there to keep up to date with everything so these are running every sunday at 9 a.m bst time or 8 p.m a i think it's aes time now so i've got it as adt but that the first one i'm going to run is called the zenla platform overview so this is what i ran when i originally started and it was kind of like really good because i run through all of the settings inside of zenla so you can sort of have a brief snapshot you don't have to do anything you can sit back and just watch you don't even you know you just have to pick up and go oh that's good that's good that's good because we're going to be running full workshops so it's very sort of sit back maybe have a coffee you know have your earplug plugs in and watch it's very um low impact on your on your behalf but it won't always be that way when we're running into sites you might want to try and build with me um, you might want to show the site. What I try and do is I try and do a recap the next week. So you and um, get you involved. What have you done? Did you manage to achieve that? You know, and then move forward. So it's almost like a class going forward as opposed to individual. They are standalone workshops, but they build on each other. So I've got a brand new blank Zenla site to start. You know, so I'm going away from the Surf Dude site that you've probably seen popping up in various places. And we're going to do another site in that. So the next one we got in here is our office hours. Now we run our office hours every Wednesday, hosted by Kevin. Um, me, David, is on there. Alice is on there. She's normally on the 5 p.m. because of her time zone. And Rakesh is on there as well. So Rakesh is giving you really good information about new features coming out and all these things it is office hours is gold dust you know if you want to keep up with the latest things going out what's been released all these things you need to just watch that replay or get on live and if you've got questions you know you've got the whole team there so the whole team are supporting you and uh, giving you the latest uh, greatest information from us at Zenla so these are our main areas at the moment again we might build on these and so definitely tune into here and just have a look see if there's any more updates going on in here and you'll see stuff so i know uh, kevin's also I haven't got them in here but we've got zen chat running as well so we might well add that in there that's like a community chat area where you can um jump in and um get get networked basically and uh, that's uh, causing a bit of a storm at the moment. It's, um, it's a pretty good thing. And I think it's going to build and be a magic. Next thing we've got here is the NZ Mastercast bundle. And I'm going to come back to this. This is our main training hub. This contains everything. And I'm going to be jumping into these, what we call zones. Okay, there's zones for different things. There's four zones in here. And they each contain different courses, not just one course, courses. Down here, we have the Zenla feature list and matrix. These are going to be updated pretty soon to make sure that we are current with these. And then there's quite a few new features that we need to add into these as well. So this is all going to be updated, but this is our feature list. So this compares how we stack up against our competition and also what you get for free, pro and premium 
on the current beta price. A um, little bit about us, and there you go. So I'm going to jump into this now. So make sure, guys, if you're new to this and you haven't enrolled in this course, you must, you simply must, because there's lots of freebies in there. And um, there's a quick start guide. So if I click there, you just need to come in here, put in your email address, enroll for free, and you get access. So once you've got access, you're going to come into this page, all right? So within here, like I said, we've got four zones, all right? So we're going to enter the first one, which is called Learn Zendler. So Learn Zendler, that's what it's about. And we're going to jump in here and you're going to see what we've got. So we've got what's called the Quick Start Guide. Now, a Quick Start Guide is what we say, you must, you must do this course. With so many questions we get, and you can tell by the question that they haven't done the Quick Start Guide, which will take you about four hours. It's really, really gentle on you and at the same time you download this basic setup checklist and you can print this out and you can just check off the things that you're doing to make sure you're doing the recommended things that we recommend that you do for your site to make sure you cover all your bases it keeps things really linear and organized you can go away you can come back to it you can check something else off you know exactly what you've done we've made it that way so it's very easy to work around your busy schedules you know we realize a lot of you are working and things like that or busy with children and stuff like that so you finding a way of making it really easy for you to work through these courses was my main thought behind the quick start guide and the quick start the guide is very gentle you can come back to it when you like with using the basic setup checklist as well which is just a pdf it's not a course it's just a pdf in there and then we got the complete guide to Zendler, which is huge. It's um, an encyclopedia. So I'm gonna jump into the quick start guide, first of all, just to show you what you're kind of getting. There's a little bit of information here, and then it's build a, a, build a site and a course in less than two hours. Now you'll find in this um, course, it's quite um, funny, I think. I put a little clock in there, so you can see it kind of going around at certain bits where I've got up to on time. So I think it took, um, two hours just under two hours to do um a site full site and of course the hot the longest thing about course creation is creating your course content it's not actually using zenla you know zenla's the fast bit you know probably if you were putting it in percentage 95 percent of your time would be on course material and five percent would be on actually doing your courses uh, within the platform depending on how much time you spend making the pages look nice so in here you can see we've got our preferred browser so we tell you what browser to use getting your content and resources together so we cover outside of the platform so creating media so how to create media for your site the zenla account invitation so where you go to get an invitation to zenda pretty much most of you have probably done it because you're in here and registering for um, for the new zenla site and then we have a quick tour of Zen. And this is basically what we're going to be doing on Sunday, on Sunday, the 7th of November. So it's a tour of the dashboard just to get you, it's a gentle thing to get you used to where everything is. And then we've got setting up your first Zen the site. So setting the branding up, the colors and things you're going to use for your site, styling the pages with Page Builder. Now we use Page Builder throughout Zenla, and you'll notice that once you start to use it inside of creating your pages, you'll also be using the same thing when you set up live pages, when you're setting up funnels. We've made it so that it's exactly the same. And I've seen with lots of other platforms, it changes a bit. We've kept it the same. So it's the same familiar block. So it means no new learning. Zen is really intuitive. Once you start to learn something, you're like, I recognize that from that area. And then you're straight away, you're familiar with it. So you can move on. So then I've got setting up navigation. Of course, navigation and links in the menu are massively important. So we talk about that briefly different pages for logged in and out logged out users so you have a different home page for logged in users logged out users and you can also set the pages up so they're only visible for logged in or logged out users where to go for more help which is kind of what i'm doing now so we've got another one here which is very much miss um people don't do this a lot and it's testing your site as a student it's absolutely essential so there's a big it's on its own that's how important it is is on its own you need to be testing yourself, your site as a student. 
um, and even doing test purchase just before you launch to make sure payments are going through and all of those sort of things. And then getting prepared for our course content. So we haven't even started the site yet. We're talking about all this and what you need to do. Setting up our first course on Zenla. So we set up testing the site, course for students. Should I do anything else? Where to go from here? Complete guide to Zenla. Upgrading to Zenla Pro and Premium. So if you haven't, I talk about why it's a good idea to do it and your next step. So NZ Masterclass Bundle. So this is the quick start guide. You can see it's really quick and you can get back to all of these zones in any of these courses. So the next one is, and this is massive, it's the complete guide to Zenla. So what we've done here is we've created an encyclopedia of everything you need to know about the platform. We're building on this all the time. Zenla creates new features all the time. So little slot in videos have to go into the complete guide just to keep it all up to date. And uh, I need to do a few of those because there's a few missing on some of the new features. So they drop in there. But using the course, really simple, guys, you just come into the course and you'll notice that this course has got a search functionality at the top. Now, this is our complete archive of videos, including all of our course videos and all of our YouTube videos. So it's good if you're familiar with the platform. If you're not and you want to know about, say, funnels, you should really go and do the funnel section in the complete guide to Zenla. All right, but if you are familiar with it and you want to find things really quick, that you can go into the search and you can go into here and you can put something like um, funnels in here, click enter, and it's going to give you a little bit of information. This was a Zenler FBH video and talks about funnels. This is a quick tour of Zen that mentions funnels in here. Bonus way of doing, adding a bonus way of doing it for a course for funnels. Um, but they are out of sequence. So some of these that are in the courses, you're not going to see the full video in sequence. So be careful with this, but it's definitely a really good, I know because you guys asked for this, you asked for a way to search through these archives. So we put it in there, but there is that caveat of it's not in sequence. If it's part of 10 videos, it's going to pull one of those videos out and you might be like, well, how did you do that? Bit? How did you, and it's because it's from the complete guide. So, Moving down here, it is good. We've also got a language option here. So most of this is live text in here. And when I mean live text, I don't mean not in text embedded into an image. Okay. So live text can be changed. So if you come up here, you can change the language. So let's take, change it to um, Arabic. So you're going to see all that everything will change to Arabic there. Um, and you can change it back via here. Or close it down so you've got a language selector in there as well and that's throughout the whole site the language so if we move down we've then got a brief information about the complete guide to Zenla and a little video to it as well telling you it covers everything and because this is our flagship encyclopedia of everything we decided to put a quick finder highlighter in here so it's simply, you can type your word. So if I was to see this says roadmap here, if I was to put roadmap and then hit OK, it's going to show in red wherever that word is mentioned within there. So you can also clear the results there and it will disappear. And each of these inside this course, it just tells you what it's about. So you can say, oh, I don't know about, I need to know about Zendler Basics. Probably this part you'll already know if you've done the quick start guide. So site setup, page builder. So this goes into a lot more detail on page builder. It goes into the footer, copying blocks, styling the pages quickly, adding new pages. Lots of pro tips in here as well, how to speed up your workflow. It's not just a case of going through steps. It's sometimes there's ways to do things much, much quicker. So I kind of show them in there as well. So you've got everything in there, copy and block code. That's if you're a free user and you can't save the blocks out. Um, cloning, unpublishing, you've got everything. Then we go on to features, features of page builder. So these are like blocks that you can bring in. So I talk about all the different blocks, like FAQ blocks, pop up, um, applying pop-ups, adding jump, jump and anchor menus. To jump and anchor menus, if you've got a menu at the top, you click 
you click one of the links, it jumps down in the page or it jumps to another page at a certain point. That's what's jump and anchor menus. So they're all in here. And I do also realize that terminology could be hard for you. So as new users, you might not realize that term for that, that word. You can always ask us, they're called jump or anchor menus. So you've got adding effects in here. And then we've got course creation. This is part one. So we've got course creation, it's a lot. So we cover all the pricing, checkout pages, thank you pages, testing. What's the difference between pro and premium? Course creation part two. So there's even more on it. So there's a lot on course creation because I want to make sure that everything is covered. Uh, we've got creating a membership style site as well. So you've got different options to create a membership site. This is all in the complete guide. Selling physical and digital products. This comes up quite a few times on the Facebook group. So we tend to put it in there. And uh, setting up custom domains and subdomains. Okay, so that's all about there. What is a subdomain? What is a domain? So we talk very clearly about all those things and setting it up with cPanel or GoDaddy there. So if you've got GoDaddy account, but you've got cPanel on 123.reg, then you can use these. A media library tells you about the media library, engagement, nurturing, quizzes and surveys, again here. And then we have subjects. So you can see the subjects of engagement and nurturing, quizzes and surveys, engagement and nurturing, communication. So you've got these things that tell you how you can engage and nurture your students or bring new ones in. Then we've got marketing. So we've got marketing, email automation. So this is all the marketing section, SEO and tracking codes related. So like things like Facebook Pixel and all this sort of stuff, uh, Google Analytics marketing videos like video and marketing funnels lead magnets and more so we cover all that step by step you build these things in there so you can follow along so it makes it nice and easy uh, what we suggest first of all is set your site up start thinking about your course how you're going to do it you can do it as a membership site are you going to do sell them individually as courses and they're going to have a subscription and they can be a payment plan you know these things you need to think about before you even start so you have an idea of where you're traveling to rather than kind of making it up as you as you work so we've got live webinars live classes live streams there's a lot of things new things been added to these areas so there are some more videos going to be added in here very very soon we've got marketing promotions and affiliates so all about affiliates and promotions coupons and setting up affiliates so setting up and creating blog posts so you can set your own blog posts up and your own pages inside Zenla. We've got email lists, so emails and email lists. We've got embedding external apps for social media and all our integrations. And that doesn't include just putting embed code in there. These are our integrations within the system itself. And final thoughts, what's coming next? So again, right down the bottom to make it even easier, all of these are just the title, but that all of these have got descriptions based on them. So under here, we thought we'd actually take that description and, and, and add the title and then add the description in so that you can use the quick find highlighter again to narrow your search down even more. So this is the complete guide to Zenla. This is the one that you'll be referring to once you've done the quick start guide. And we've made it as easy as we can at this stage for you guys to find the information as quick as you need to. Now, if you want to jump back to any of the other sections, I'm just watching the time here because I don't want to run on too long. We, you, down the bottom of each course, you have your zones again, so you can easily get back. So the next zone I'm going to go into, because once you've created your site and you've created your courses, you're going to want to market it. And you know, it's what is the biggest pain point that you as an online creator has the number one point that you're saying, if you're shouting now is marketing. Uh, we give you all the tools to market, but actually taking it, taking those tools and using them to market and find your students, get them into your site is the hardest bit. So we've given you all the tools. They're all in there. You don't have to buy extra things like click funnels, active campaign, even a Zoom account. You know, you can do it all a Zoom paid account. You can do it all in Zenla. So we've given you those tools. Zenla is marketing centric. OK, so marketing, we realize it's the most important thing. And then once you've got that, then we've put all these other things. So course creation, you've got blogs in there, all 
part of getting people into the site. So marketing is the biggest thing. So inside this zone here, we have a few courses. So it's going to be more added to this. We've just finished this Zendla basic marketing course. Please go in there. If you are got your site, you've got your course, maybe you've you've had it up for like maybe a year, maybe three months, and you're not really getting much traffic in there. You must watch this. You, you absolutely have to and follow the advice given in here. Also check out Kevin's amazing five day blogging challenge as well, because uh, Kevin makes this really easy. He, he gives you a goal. You achieve that, then you move on to the next one and then it all kind of comes together. I had this after actually attending this blogging challenge, I thought, I can do the similar thing with the marketing course. And that's what I was trying to achieve. It's a bigger course because I cover a lot of different stuff in there, but it was using Kevin's way of thinking with the blogging challenge that I adapted it across, you know, into the marketing course. So you've got to take this. Hopefully I've had nobody say that it's hard or they can't do anything. Um, you definitely need to go in here if you, you know, you're trying, you're at that stage, it's like, I can't sell, you know, I can't sell. You need to get in here, you need to watch this, okay? Uh, otherwise, you can, of course, get a marketer and pay thousands and thousands and um, hopefully recoup your money back against sales that that company's made. But if you do it yourself, you know. And also, what I say is, even if you're thinking of hiring someone else, go and check the course out, watch the course, then you'll have a real understanding. You'll be able to talk on a marketer's level you know, you'll be able to tell, you'll be able to ask the questions to them. What do you do? Do you do this? You know, am I getting value for money? You can make that decision just by watching that basic marketing course. Definitely watch it. Uh, marketing is an area that we are expanding. I know Kevin's doing some more workshops on these sort of things. So um, that area is going to fill up a little bit more. So stay tuned again into the Facebook group for announcements from Kevin launching these. And I know Alice does uh, marketing as well. So maybe she'll jump on and do things. She's already done one on Facebook and she's on later this afternoon as well, showing you how to build or get leads into an email list. So this is the marketing area, essential. I'm going to jump straight across to the boot camps before I go into Zenla Extras. So let's go into the Zenla boot camp. And here we have launch your first challenge. So there's going to be more boot camps going here. And this is a course that Kevin did. And I know he's going to be launching another one. And it's going to, they're going to start to drop in here. But these are really good boot camps and challenges to accelerate your progress as you're working towards a specific goal to achieve a result. So there's one goal to do. You've given those lessons to complete. Kevin usually checks those as well. So he critiques stuff as you go through, tells you, no, that's not good enough, or you need to change this. And he guides you as you go um, to reach one goal. You know, so you're not trying, not overwhelming you too much with this stuff. So definitely um, when Kevin ever brings out a boot camp, make sure you jump on it. And uh, next I'm going to jump into the Zendler Extras. So Zendler Extras is an area that lots of the courses in there are have been asked for by you guys you know um, or their workshops that have been run so i'm going to jump into zender extras now and there's quite a lot going on we've got ethically copy a site so there's more content needs to be added to these when we get time to put more stuff in but the first one is ethically copy a site so what we've done is we've taken someone's site that might be a WordPress site, could be a Drupal site, could be anything, a Squarespace, Wix, whatever. And uh, we actually make that into a Zenla version. Okay, Usually it looks better. So um, definitely check out ethically copy a site. So next we have branding and design. Now we have a special guest in that, one of the instructors. He's actually in the group, Ian Hamilton, and he has a... Well, well, I don't know, it's like 40, 40 years experience in branding or something. Um, crazy amount of time. So he comes on and he gives you a branding blitz. He tells you the important things to think about when you're branding your website. Now, when people think of branding, they just think of, oh, my logo, oh, my colors, oh, my fonts. But there's actually more to it than that. It's the whole identity. 
and brand and logos and all those things are just one part of it. Okay. So that is a really good one to watch. I also throw in my input as well, because I've been doing branding for 30 years as well. So I throw in my thoughts on these things and I try to simplify the process so that you're not overwhelmed by creating your own brand image yourself. And again, not paying an expert to do it and cost you thousands. So next we have hardware and software. So in hardware and software, I'm talking about this kind of setup here. And we go into details. Maybe I'll show you how to edit in Camtasia, these kind of things. And I might use other software. So hardware and software need to add to this as well. I've got lots of ideas for these to add extra things in here. So we have time to prioritize that and do that. So if I jump into this one here now, we've got the advanced ninja tricks. Now, this is pretty um. I've tried to make it as straightforward as possible, but it is coding. So, you know, Zenla is for someone that doesn't know any code or anything. But what you don't know is if you're just touching the surface is Zenla is really, really powerful. And it would be terrible not to mention the things you can do with the platform using things like JavaScript, CSS, your own HTML. If you don't want to touch any of that, just don't go into the course. But a lot of people do, and they really make their sites look completely different. And like I said, I've tried to make it as easy as possible for you to follow this. So have a look. Sometimes people ask a specific question. I go, well, that's in the Ninja Tricks. And then they go there, they go, yeah, but it's coding. And then they go in there and then they go, oh, that was easy. <laughs> so, so it's not that hard. I'm not getting into hardcore coding. You know, it's really light stuff. It's fluffy stuff to make your site look lovely. And that's all it is. So I'm going to just show you, um, this is using lots of ninja tricks in here. This is a site that I'm kind of working on as a showcase to show you what's actually possible inside of Zenla. And you'll see here, you have this animated figure in here on the background. He is on a background. You'll also see there's a parallax effect going on. So he's jumping on top of it. And you'll also see some animation in here, but you'll also see that this is a sticky menu at the top and it's also transparent and you've got a fade through. Now we also have some blocks here designed nicely, little figure jumping around. And if I refresh this screen, you will actually see that this actually starts up straight away. It's just a video off YouTube. Now, I've also embedded a little game in here as well that you can play. So there's actually a game embedded into this page as well. So this is a work in progress, but it's just to show you the sort of things you can do if you're interested in ninja tricks. So next we have the live workshop replays. Now, this contains all the Sunday. You know, I was talking about every Sunday I run these replays. Well, this is the first lot that I run. So you can see a tour around Zen the dashboard. So it's the first one we're doing for the new for the new time slot. We've got page builders. We've got form and funnels, part one and two, emails and users, live Q&A sessions, branding and the design got quick tours, we've got course creation, we've got live webinars and classes, we've got memberships, one page, and we've got multi-page memberships, live Q&A sessions. There's more to go in here as well. So this is all the stuff that we did. So these are live broadcasts. You'll see other people in there because they were taking part in that live event and they're all inside of here. So Jumping back now, have a look through them. Definitely have a look through these courses. You know, just have a look. I'm not going to jump into them now, but we're now going to go into Zenla theme packs. All right. So let's jump into here. So what is Zenla theme packs? Well, the theme pack is a temporary solution until we upgrade our page builder. We're upgrading our page builder to 2.0. And later on, we're going to then start having the ability to be able to add themes, page themes, so complete themes. You've probably seen them in other platforms. So we're going to be adding professionally designed themes. So instead of having the one theme when you go into your site, you better pick a theme and have it ripple through. And there's also going to be lots of other changes and things in there as well for saving blocks and these kind of things. 
But before that comes out, because you guys were asking for it, I decided that um, it would be good to put it in here. So the team said, yes, let's just put these in here. So we show you how to do it. We've got some installation videos, uh, tell you what they're for, downloading the packs, installing the packs, and customizing the packs as well. So what are the packs? The packs are actual whole page themes, but you don't need to use the whole page theme. You could just use parts of the page. So for this one, for instance, if I click here, it will show a little preview of it. And we have this theme in there. So you can take that whole, all those blocks. These are individual blocks, block one, block two, block three, block four. And you can put them into your site and you can adapt them to make them work for you. Really easy to download. Click the download button, little zip file. Instructions are all in there. Just follow the installation here and you can load them on. So we've got a Netflix style one as well, which is pretty nice. So it's kind of Netflix style look and feel. If you've got a library with a, a famous FAQ block, you can open up with an e with a inline form as well. And then if I move down, oh, we've got a meditation one here. So this is a fitness, a fitness one here. Again, you can take those blocks and adapt them. We've got more of a kind of business one here. So you've got all these kind of things popping up, extra menus here if you want to use them and lots of little shaking around of the icons and things like that, more, more business-wise, and a form down the bottom with all the social media down there. Down here, I've got a call to action pack. So these are individual blocks. These are page blocks. These are singular blocks. So you'd look at a block, see it, want to copy that code, and you can. So I've got a few different types in here. Got a nice little block there, all in line form. Got another call to action block here. You got a call to action block here. And here with a bit of animation. Got a nice doggy one there. A bit like Rakesh Buddy. Buddy's a bit bigger now. So there is those ones in there. And we've got also a form block as well. So in here, different forms. This is one form here. So you just might want an inline form. We've got another form there, another inline form, another form. And again, you can use these. You can just take them out, change the colors really quickly and make them work for your site. We've also got a bit on troubleshooting blocks. So if you have any problems, then this should solve it. It tells you about if you have any trouble with them. Now I ran someone through this uh, who is complete, um, novice with these things and admits herself she's a technophobe with these and uh, she had no problem at all <clears throat> so i thought ah it's safe to to run it so next we have down here is we have certificates now this only went up yesterday and it's all about certificates so in zenla we give you some default certificates but i wanted to or we wanted to actually put more in there, give you a bigger choice. So I, I've been getting really into certificates. So I've been doing these workshops <clears throat> and I'm going to run another one later. And um, I thought it's a good chance as well to put them into here so you can use them. So you've got how to install it. You've got the software that you need if you, if you want to edit them. And you've got these packs that you can download. Yeah, so you can download those, follow the instructions, and you'll be set. All right, so that is our NZ Masterclass bundle. And you should be totally familiar with it now. I've gone into that in great detail. So I'm going to move on to our YouTube channel now. Now, obviously, you guys are on Facebook, so you know how that works. You know, so you can talk about our YouTube channel is a really good resource as well, because sometimes videos on here we don't put anywhere else. And what people don't realize is that you can actually search. So if you're on our channel, which is youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Lenla, you can go and into the little search and you can search for things. So if I want to check out 
maybe I want to look for custom domain. I can put domain in here and I'm going to get all the videos we've done on how to set up custom domains for New Zealand. So it's really powerful to use that search functionality in there. A lot of people don't. Also, it's a good idea to subscribe and hit the bell icon because whenever we bring out a new feature release, you get a notification. So you'll know when we've added a new thing. So we've created a new one there. You can see we've got enrollment limit for courses that came out the other one day ago. And we also have cuts and language support as well. That came out a week ago. <clears throat> we have the R senders as well, where you guys have asked for things. Pro, um, the testimonials, pro user interviews, Zenler FBH. Today with Zenlers, go on here. Live workshops that we've done that are also on the live workshops. So go and check those out our office hours and our live builds as well. So these are live builds. These are streamed straight to the Facebook group. So this is our training. This is our training resources to help you get up to speed with the platform as quick as possible. Of course, you're posting questions on Facebook as well. And the community, you guys are fantastic. You help each other. And that's what, exactly what we want. We want a community. We don't want people just leeching you know, we like people to talk together, uh, network together, ask questions, and we answer them on there. But most of the time, you guys help each other out and answer things. And our Facebook group is amazing. You guys are fantastic. So, um, you know, kudos for you because you make our life a lot easier by helping each other out. Um, and that's why it gives us a chance. You help each other out. It means we can get on with things like creating certificates, like me, as the, me Kevin and Alice um, and Rakesh are like on the support side and educational side. It means we can spend more time on the education side. You might have seen on the Facebook group, I've been on there a bit less because I've been trying to put in place all these other things. So it's like time management. You know, if I'm spending time on Facebook, it means I can't create new stuff for you guys. So by you helping each other out is helping us and it's giving you more. So the whole thing kind of rolls and it's a beautiful thing to see when it works like it does with Zenla. So guys, that is our support. I'm gonna check um, with the questions and then I need to send the link out to this to Kat because Kat's gonna be taking over at 10. So is there any questions? Just going to jump across and check just before we run up to 10 o'clock. And then afterwards, we've got the certificates. So that's going to be great. So can't see any questions coming in yet from you guys. I guess you maybe you already know. Sandy's book, what time UK, please? Yeah, it's, it's mentioned on the, well, we're live now. So now, <laughs> get on here now. Um, no other questions coming in at this time. All right, so I'm gonna be pausing for a little bit now whilst I just set up the invite for Kat to come in. And then we're gonna be starting off at 10. So at 10 o'clock, we're going to jump straight into Kat's presentation, um, confidence and impact for your courses. So it's gonna be really good. And you guys that are watching on replay, you know, um, hope you like it. And remember that we are live. So if you put any questions in the comments, I will always try to answer them. You know, a day was then there is about answers, answering your questions. So you have questions. So we want questions to come in, but we have to fill up the slots. So we have this time thing, but the questions are the priority. So if questions come in, it's like if I'm doing a presentation on how to create certificates, I will stop, I will answer those questions and then we'll carry on with the certificates. If we don't finish it, it's not the priority. The priority is answering your questions. That's why we're here. All right, so while I'm even while I'm off, just make sure that you type questions in there and we will get to them in this first session. So, right, I'm going to just send a video out. So I'm stopping this for now. I'm gonna be back at 10 guys. So 10 o'clock, I'm back.
Hi right, guys, just before uh, Kat comes on to join us, uh, I'm going to um, just have a look at some of the comments that have come in. I see David says, um, I'm working too hard. Yeah, it's a hard life, isn't it? I do enjoy it. It's just very, um, some of these long sessions um, really can take it out of you. We only really just started. So I'm going to get into the swing of it, you know, as we go on. So Tracy's here as well from Oz. Excellent. And we, if we have any questions, I'm going to answer them in my slot after Kat's finished. So I know Anita's put um, some a question down in there and you're breaking up a lot. Anita's saying I'm breaking up a lot. Must be your internet. I think I'm fine here. Yeah, David's fine. So check your internet. Yeah, so thanks. It's good. Right, coffee time. Coffee time for Pauline and Debbie's on as well. Good to see you guys. So yeah, we got Kat um, coming along, and um, Kat is uh, is going to be really good. She's impactfulpresenters.com. So and she has her Zendless site. It looks good. So we'll be having a look at that at the end of her presentation. So it's really nice. Got two uh, people. Got Zalissa coming on later with uh, launching. When's the best time to launch? Of course, and um, she's talking about planetary alignment and things. So um, it's going to be really interesting to uh, see how that um, how that rolls because it's a you know it's, it's really good. We want new instructors to come on if you've got something to offer. Um, people love this sort of stuff. So. We're going to be doing more of this in the day with Zen. We're going to be adding more presenters. We're kind of building up. So we've got two today. And uh, then maybe next, next end of next month, we'll have like maybe four or five of you on, you know. So that'll be really good. It'll be like a group session then, not just my face all day, you know, looking at it. But we got Alice on as well. So Alice is here. Um, Rakesh has got, um, he's been through the roadmap a few times. So he's pulling out this this month but maybe he'll add it next month and um go through that again because it's um i think it's really useful information for you guys if you've not seen any of these before to go through now this is a chance for you to ask questions as well that's why it's really been set up but it's sort of turned into something different originally when i had they was in or i was like be great people can just come on put their questions but as it happens not many people put that many questions in so you're like right well i have to do something different then. so what i'll do is i'll show how to do this and then then you've got we've got instructors coming in and then alice or kevin have um, got little slots that they can do in there so it's turning into something really kind of wonderful um not and that's the thing with like course creation sometimes like you run lives and things and they go in a different direction than you originally planned and that's all right you know because that's a natural thing that's a natural development of things and and it goes with your site as well you might do a site page and then later on you might do a, a mock-up site page and go actually this looks better and then you might change it and adapt that through your site and that's evolution for you you know so you'll get comments from other people you'll put them in and then the thing changes and develops into something maybe that you never expected i know i don't know if the same with you guys but like i do like digital sculpting and things like that and i never thought that one of my biggest selling courses would be just solely for professional jewelers you know i'm not a jeweler i i do get things cast but it was such a big demand for it that i worked with these jewelers asking them what they wanted in a course and using my skills in um 3d I could then make that vision that they had a reality. And so that was something that changed completely and went off. And I'm doing another one for miniatures. Lots of people want, you know, 3D printers are so cheap now that people want to print out their own miniatures for things like board games, like Dungeons and Dragons or like, um, you know, military games and things like that. So then that's another market that is like, oh, OK, <laughs> I didn't know I was going to go in that area. So you kind of find that even with courses, stuff goes out. And this is another really good point is that if you've got people in there, ask them what they want. What do you want from a course? See, see and do a small course testing it and see whether it gets traction because you might be surprised it might get tons of traction and you go oh i'm going to turn this into a, i'm going to spend a lot of time now and turn this into a fully fledged course and then suddenly you can your revenue stream can go from that side right over to there so always adapt and um, try different things out 
look at what the com competitors are doing and say, right, how can I make mine different? How can I make more exciting? Those are the kind of things. And, and usually it's something really simple. It may be holding a live session a week that no one else is doing. Those kind of things can make a big, big impact. So I'm going to have Kat come on in a second. She's busily waiting there so she can come on when she wants. I'll just message her. And Kat is doing, I think it's about 20 to 30 minute um, presentation. So then she's got some, if you've got any questions, please fire in there. If not, I will ask some questions myself. And um, then, uh, then she's off. So I think it's about 45 minutes in total, which will take us to about 10.45. So here is Kat. Hi, Kat. We'll try that again. How are you going? Hello. Hello. Oh, that's a bit bright. Two seconds. Let me just <laughs> turn my light down. So oh. if you can't tell already, Kat is from Australia. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold that against me like that. I can say g'day, mate. <laughs> What's the time where you are, Kat? 7 p.m. Because I'm in Brisbane, so we don't have daylight savings. Look, 7 p.m. and it's nice and bright. <laughs> well, that's because I've got my lights on. I've got oh, my right. lights on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. So uh, Kat is, uh, runs uh, impactfulpresenters.com, and she's going to do a little presentation for us. Do you want to have a quick um, talk about yourself, what you do, and all those yeah, things? Yeah, sure. Well, so I... I I do a few things, um, but the thing that I'm going to talk about today is impactful presenters. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about why I do that shortly. But um, my kind of the other thing that I do is I work full time in local government here. So um, depending on where you are in the world, um, it's like municipal government or county councils um, where I head up economic and community development. But impactful presenters is I've decided it's my art, it's my creative outlet um, where I get to teach people how to speak with confidence and present with impact because the more you can, um, the more that people can present with impact, then the more people can make their dent in the universe. And I firmly believe that we need more people making their dent in the universe. Yeah, for sure. For sure. No, it's really good. All right. So do you want to take it away? Uh, you should. Sure. Be able to, I don't know if you're screen sharing as well, but um, you should I be will able to I will share screens. So let me just get all of my screens lined up in the right places. So I want to go with that one and bring that over here. Never smooth the old screen sharing process, is it? We've been doing <laughs> it for so long now, but it still just takes a couple of clunky moments. Yeah, so just confirm for me, yeah, so you're seeing a lovely, lovely window there and that's filling the screen. Uh, I can see it. Um, if you can make it, oh, that's better. Yeah, that's a bit bigger. Good. All right, let me just, I'll just get it full screen. There we go. Okay. So what David has asked me to talk about um, tonight, this morning, um, in this session is how to create confidence and make impact. And as I was just saying, um, you know, I do a lot of things in my life. I do a lot of things. But my history um, actually started in personal development programs for long-term unemployed youth. Um, and that was, um, that was a stunning experience in itself. But one of the key adventures that I got as a result of that program was that we had trainee facilitators who were coming away with us. I mean, these programs were 10 day residential programs and we were teaching long-term unemployed youth how to not be long-term unemployed. They were substantive life skills programs. And I don't know if you have teenagers, I don't know if you have worked with um, children, but there is one thing about a young person audience and that is they will not let you bullshit they are ruthless in how they let you know whether or not you're doing okay and so in running these programs I got to watch these trainee facilitators 
not just be trained, but also then get debriefed. And what I discovered in that process was that speaking is a skill. It's not a talent. And I got to pick up all of these extraordinary distinctions that I would otherwise never have been exposed to. And so over the last 20 years of my career, particularly in the last 10 where I've been in high profile um, kind of figurehead or spokesperson roles, what has really come home to me is it's not just about brazen confidence, which people often think that I have. It's obvious that I'm not shy, right? But just because I'm not shy doesn't mean that I was always impactful, doesn't mean that I was always landing my message. And so why I created Impactful Presenters was because I really wanted other people to understand that you can learn how to speak with confidence and impact. And when you can speak with confidence and impact, then you can create your own business, like we all do here on New Zealand Life. You can lead your teams in a workplace far more um, effectively. You can make sales far more confidently. You can even persuade your partner or your kids far more effectively. And as I was saying before, when you can speak with confidence, you can facilitate change. And one of the things that I see often in social media land in particular is that a lot of us are frustrated. A lot of us are annoyed at the state of the world, annoyed at the state of different causes, issues, concerns. And part of the reason why we're frustrated is because we don't feel like we can make a change. We don't feel like we can make impact. And part of the reason why that is so frustrating is because our world is currently dominated by very homogenous voices. And when those opposing views start to engage in debate, we actually can't debate well. We instead just... Um, well, we get righteously indignant, don't we? And we, you know, insult and we get personal. And so my position in the world is that when you can speak with confidence, you can facilitate change. And when you can facilitate change, then you can change the world one conversation at a time. But sadly, most people don't think that they can speak confidently, articulately or with impact. They lose their words, they ramble, they forget what they're trying to say or probably one of the most common things is we get struck down that imposter by that imposter syndrome. So what I wanted to do before I get stuck into some of my tips is I want to ask, what kind of speaker are you? What kind of speaker are you? Now I'm just checking to see whether I can see chat. I kind of can. So maybe David, you can feed any responses through to me as I go through this little process. But what kind of speaker are you? Just let, let us know in the um, in the chat box. So yeah. first of all, we've got Nervous Nikki. Nervous Nikki gets nervous every time they even think about having to speak in public or um, speak to an audience. Now, when I say audience, sometimes an audience is literally just one person. Um, you know, that dreaded feeling of nerves that kick in when you need to talk to somebody senior or when you need to um, really make a concerted point nervous nikki tends to show up sometimes other times nervous nikki is not so much about how nervous they get but it's how your body responds you know those that flushed neck or the shaking hands so let me know if you're a nervous nikki one of the other types of speakers that we have is a rambling riley now rambling riley is certainly um i tend to go this place sometimes when I'm speaking spontaneously or speaking in a meeting that I haven't prepared I get so excited by all the information I have I just want everyone to have all of the information and all of the things and so I ramble and my poor audience just doesn't understand where I'm trying to take them what I want them to do where I'm starting where I'm finishing what the middle is and what they're meant to do with all of this information now, Rambling Riley is a little bit similar to good old dumping, data dumping Danny, and I'm sure we've all experienced data dumping Danny in terms of receiving information from them or perhaps being a data dumping Danny. And this is where 
Data dumping Danny wants to rely on all the knowledge that they've got and they want to quickly get it out of their head before they forget it. And they want to quickly get it out of their head now before they lose the opportunity to ever speak to their audience again. It's kind of akin to me now telling you everything I know about speaking with confidence and impact in the very short 20 minutes or so that we've got together. But again, all that does is drown my audience in information. Then we've got poor old ordinary Ollie, who basically just sits there and says, well, what have I got to say? Why, why would anybody listen to me? I don't really have anything amazing or different to say. And this is often where imposter syndrome comes in. We forget and we misunderstand the value of our perspective of the world, our unique experience and opinions and how that shapes our presentation of what could be a topic that heaps of other people talk about because goodness knows heaps of other people talk about presentation skills then we've got worried Whitney poor old worried Whitney feels like they don't know their topic deep enough and goodness knows somebody might ask me a question and I won't have the answer because somebody will ask a technical question that I don't have an answer to and so they don't want to take the stage or they don't want to present their information in case they get caught out, in case somebody discovers that maybe they're not the expert that they're purporting to be. And then finally, we've got tongue-tied Taylor, who gets tongue-tied, loses their words, even though they've got heaps of ideas and in a one-on-one -on -one environment, they're actually really good. They're really good. They're the person that people come to all of the time. But when they actually have to present when it matters, then they get tongue-tied. So I'm curious, and David, perhaps you can put me a message or let me know, which one are you? Which, <laughs> oh, which, which one? You know, it's really hard. Sometimes different days, different moods, I kind of think. But I, I yep. think like, I'm, I do, I can, I've really had to work on slowing myself down. And yeah. um, I would say I would say I'm a little bit of all of them in a way. Um, the data dump one was quite good because I can I can get really data dumpy, you know, and uh, nerdy. <laughs> I get into and I've really I've really changed the way I never use acronyms. I always explain everything that I'm saying now so that it makes yeah. it very easy to follow. But I've learned that from experience. Like, I can't bully you. I can't because I'm, ah! I'm I'm going like yeah, absolutely. not because. Yeah, not because I'm shy or anything. It's just because I was shy when I was younger. I was really shy when I was younger. But yeah. I've got through that because it's kind of like, take me how I am. You know, yeah. that's how I look at it. You can't. And so. data dumping, Danny, we, we, we go there too because, one, we get into our role of the geeky and the nerdy and how exciting all of this is. It's like, look what we've done here and look what we've got here and look at all these <laughs> new features. And our audience is sitting there going, mm-hmm. I, yeah. I, I was lost back at a landing page. <laughs> yeah, it's good. It's good to be excited, but it's not <laughs> good to be too excited. I can cross that line sometimes, you know. So it's like, ah, oh, we've got you someone. We've got Pauline. Pauline says she sometimes she's a bit of a sidetrack, Sarah. <laughs> oh, cute! I'm going to add that sidetrack, Sarah. So sidetrack. <laughs> let me guess, Pauline. You um, you 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 start talking along one particular track, and then another thought comes in, and so ooh, squirrel. Yeah. Squirrel. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the reason I created these little personas is there's absolutely nothing wrong with any of these. Like, you know, th this is the human condition, right? But for me, it's how do we actually, one, understand that, and then two, bring in some tools that actually helps us speak with more impact. So it doesn't matter whether you are sidetrack Sarah, data dumping Danny, rambling Riley, speaking is a skill. Speaking with impact and with confidence is a skill and it's a skill that anyone can learn. It is not a talent that some of us are born with and some of us aren't. It is a skill. And so this morning, tonight, whenever you're watching, what I want to do is give you three key frameworks to help all of those conditions. And at the end, I'm also going to give you a little bonus um, piece around how to speak impactfully to video. Because if we're using Zenla, then we're producing video to teach or to make our dent in the universe. And the video speaking environment 
is quite a unique one. And even though we're all really used to it now because of the last couple of years, there are still some tips and tricks that can just take you to the next level. So my first tip is, or my first step is creating an earn the right. Now, an earn the right is just as much for you as it, in, as it is for your audience. And an earn the right basically reminds yourself as well as your audience, who are you? Why are you an expert in this field? And why should you listen to me right now? So if you cast your mind back to the start of this presentation, David asked me a little bit about myself. I started setting up how it is that I have learned how to speak over these years and how I've got a unique perspective on speaking with impact. And then I talked about why it's so important to me that more people can speak with impact. So how do you pull together and earn the right? Well, first of all, you start with your name. Now, this is... People kind of go to me, what do you mean you start with your name? Well, even if you are nervous as all get out, even if your knees are knocking and you can't get many words out, you can remember, hi, my name is Kat, because it's your name. Now, this is a little psychological trick, basically. It's, little, it's literally a tip for yourself that just goes, it's me, I'm speaking, I'm presenting, and I know who I am and I know what I'm doing. It's also just rapport building, right? When we introduce ourselves to new people, we introduce ourselves with our name. So the first piece is really easy, your name. The next piece of your earn the right is what do you do and why do you do it? Now, again, cast your mind back to how I introduce myself. I do a whole lot of things, but in this context, this is what I do and this is why I do it. People often think when I teach this component that they need to start delivering a resume or a CV of, you know, their last 20 years. That's not what I'm talking about, but I will talk about in a second where some of those experiences come into it. It's more in the context of life, why is it that you're talking about this particular topic right now and why are you worth listening to? Now, why are you worth listening to is an interesting one because this is oftentimes where imposter syndrome kicks in because people think, well, why would they be listening to me? I'm not the expert on this topic. You don't have to be the expert. You just need to be an expert. No one in the world is the expert on anything. But what I consistently hear from people is, oh, I'll be happy to start presenting once I've done a bit more study or once I've seen more clients or once I've got my PhD or once I've published my book or blah, 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 blah. None of the experts that you see feel like they are expert enough, but yet they do it anyway. So people want to hear from you because you have a unique perspective. You have a unique style. You have, a, you have something that makes you interesting to them. And the more you connect in with that, the more you will connect in with your ideal audience. So I make no bones about the fact that I'm not teaching people how to speak with confidence because I want them to be professional speakers. In fact, I'm not the least bit interested in any of those speaking organisations or Toastmasters or speakers associations or anything like that. I just want to teach everyday people how to speak with impact. So, and, and that's a piece that resonates. Now, the third part of your earn the right is a couple of stories, a couple of stories that illustrate this particular piece. Now, I haven't done that too well this evening because I'm obviously rambling a little bit, but I did talk about how I used to work with long-term unemployed youth and how they're a really challenging audience. So subtly, I've let you know, I can deal with really challenging audiences. You know, so there's already that kind of little piece. One of the other stories that I didn't let, I didn't spend much time on, but you saw at the front of my slides, is that my last professional role was as Brisbane's chief digital officer. Massive role in terms of speaking engagement and leading. Well, technically, my role, as the Lord Mayor used to say, was to lead the digital transformation of the city's economy. Just a small little job. And what I learned in that role was how to speak to audiences where they're at. 
digital transformation means jack diddly squat to 99% of the population. But what people are interested in is how do I take my business online? How do I market my business online? How do I use social media? So that experience was a real turning point for me in terms of understanding how to move past just phrase and confidence and into speaking with confidence. So if they're the three parts of your earn the right, your name, because you can remember it, what you do, because it establishes why you should be listened to right now, and then a couple of stories. To expand on the couple of stories, what I want you to do as a result of listening to me speak today, if nothing else, is to start building what I call, or actually what this fabulous author calls, a brag bag. Now, I'm really hoping that brag is a universal word here. Brag, brag in the Aussie vernacular, and I'm pretty sure in most Western cultures, is the boast. It's the um, what do you do well? What do you do good? Now, in Australia, we have terrible what we call tall poppy syndrome, where we don't like to pop our heads up above the crowd because we're scared that we're going to get shot down. Your brag bag is kind of a soft way, if you like, of reminding yourself as much as your audience of the good things you've done, of the wins. Now, Peggy Klaus in this book, The Art of Tooting Your Own Horn Without Blowing It, talks at length about how do you celebrate and own and claim all of your wins, your successes, your expertise, your experience without sounding like an arrogant twat. It's beautiful. It's just beautiful. But her key tool that I have used now for the last 20 years since I read this book was this notion of a brag bag. So think about the last time you had a client win. Think about the fact that you've created this program on Zenla. Think about the time that a client, um, as a result of going through your course, truly shifted and was truly able to do something that they weren't able to do before. Think about a couple of jobs ago where you um, made a tremendous impact. Think about that first ever job that got you started on this particular journey. And this isn't about testimonials, but think about those experiences that would give rise to a testimonial. So I recommend that people literally just create a brag folder on their computer. And anytime they think of something that demonstrates or illustrates what they do, just write the story out, like literally the beginning, the middle and the end of the story. By getting present to those stories, by remembering them yourself and then using them as a regular habit to illustrate what you can do for other people, you do a number of things. First of all, you build your own confidence. The best antithesis or the best remedy for imposter syndrome is to just look back in your life and go, oh no, I've done that. I've been there. I've, you know, I'm not, I'm not making this up. But when you can demonstrate your expertise through stories, then you build greater rapport and it's a far more engaging conversation for your audience to listen to. So build a brag bag. So that was earn the right. That was framework number one. Second framework is to begin with the end in mind. Now, if you've read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, you'll recognise this as habit number two. If you haven't read Stephen Covey's Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, highly, highly, highly recommend it. In the context of presentations and speaking, what's your outcome? Why are you having this conversation or why are you delivering this presentation? To go back to the example that I was using before with David, it's like, well, today, a day with Zendler is all about helping the community to leverage this platform even more. So what's the outcome? Well, to understand what's here. The key part is what does your audience currently know about that? So I was sitting here watching in the background going, I had no idea. I had no idea that all those resources were sitting here. None, none. So I'm just thinking, far out. Where, where do I find all of those again? From the context of a prep of preparation, from the context of um, speaking with impact, understand where do you want your audience to be at the end of your presentation? 
where are they now? Where are they likely to be now in comparison? And then what are the three key messages? Only three, only three. What are the three key messages that you need to land so your audience can get closer to where you want them to be? Now, I want to come back to rambling Riley and data dumping Danny here. When we get excited about our topic, we want our audience to know everything. But really, as educators and as leaders and as change makers, all we want to do is to set up the next conversation. All we want to do is set up the next conversation. Not give our audience everything, but get them to the next conversation. So in this conversation, where do you want to land? Where do you want your audience to be at the end? A quick note on the three key messages. Um, some of you would be familiar with a, a practice called neuro-linguistic programming. Neuro-linguistic programming is at the base of many, many, many adult learning principles and techniques, and I was lucky enough to do my practitioner certification, gosh, should it be 25 years ago now. One of the key insights in that model is the amount or the number of chunks of information that the adult mind can process in any given moment. And that model is this, seven plus or minus two. Seven plus or minus two. Your a human brain can only consciously take in seven plus or minus two chunks of information. So basically five to nine chunks. Now think about that for a second. Right here, right now, you're listening to me. You're probably checking emails. You're looking at Facebook. You're watching the chat stream. You're thinking about what your next meal is going to be. You're wondering what you're going to do for the rest of the day. A whole lot of that stuff is sitting there kind of in your subconscious background. But in terms of me teaching you any new information, I'm competing with all of that. All of that. So if I try to give you more than three chunks of information, I've already overloaded you because your mind is already working on other things. So three key messages. It's really tempting to do more. And also just on that, your three key messages aren't um, sound bites. They're your core chunks. And so I've already set this up. I'm giving you three key frameworks today. They're my three key messages. So three messages. Don't try and trick those. It's not a, it's in your best interest to only try to land three key messages with your audience in any given conversation. And if you've got more than three, then there's more than one conversation. So think about how you progress them into the next one. Framework number three, be of service. Now, I know this sounds really silly. But so often when I speak to aspiring speakers, all of their concerns sit in this place of what if people don't think I'm enough? What if people think, don't think I know enough? What if people, what if I make a mistake? What, blah, blah, blah. But if you flip that perspective and say, what is it that my audience needs from me right now? How can I be of service to my audience right now? How can I help them get to where they want to be? We are all helpers. We would not be teaching people if we weren't helpers. So when we take the focus off ourselves and instead place it on our audience, all of those nerves, a lot of those nerves, a lot of that rambling, a lot of that data dumping, all of it moves because we're instead saying to ourselves, well, where is our audience at right now and how can I best support them to the next step? So just to recap those three frameworks, three key messages, those three frameworks, earn the right, own your credibility, own your experience, own why you are speaking right now. Create a brag bag of stories. Now, the, this is the other thing about creating a brag bag of stories. Your brag bag of stories can then be used anywhere that you're speaking, not just in your earn the right, but if somebody asks me a question shortly, I'm going to be able to dip into my brag bag of stories and go, let me pull out this one that illustrates that. So the more stories you consciously put into your brag bag, however you do that, the better equipped you'll be. Step number two, begin with the end in mind. Where do you want to take your audience and where are they now in comparison? And then three, be of service. 
It's not about you. It's about them. It's not about you. It's about them. Now, I promised that I would also give you some tips for video because, you know, that's where we hang out now. That's where it's all at. So my first tip is to talk through the camera, not at the screen. Now, this, this is a hard one, particularly when we're presenting to decks and we've got our notes down here, but our audience is here. Similarly, if you were speaking on a live stage with real life people in front of you, you would be looking down to your notes and then looking back up to your audience, looking down to your notes and then looking to your audience. But when we're on video, we have to remember that our audience is actually seeing us on the other side of the camera, not on the other side of the screen. There is a fantastic children's TV show here in Australia called Play School. It's one of the longest running TV shows of all time. Um, predates, um, predates the Wiggles and, of, and it's won similar awards to Sesame Street. But unlike Sesame Street, Play School is a 30-minute TV show where there's only two presenters doing a whole lot of things for preschoolers. And I remember listening to one of those presenters once say, how they do it, how they create such engaging content is they imagine the children that they're hanging out with on the other side of the camera and that's who they're engaging with. So when we're on video, it's really easy to be looking at ourselves. It's been really easy to be looking at the other people on the screen. It's all those kind of things and that's all important, but how you create a really strong connection with your audience is look through your camera through your camera not at the camera through the camera the other thing about video is be extra animated because well one the distractions are real you're everyone who's watching this right now is multitasking i can absolutely guarantee it the other thing is that we have been trained that when we're watching a screen it needs to entertain us because we've all grown up in the tv generation so as a TV presenter right now, I need to be bigger. I need to be more animated. I need to be more engaging. The other thing around that then is to create extra movement in your slides. My standing, my standard rule for presentations would be that you should have no more than one slide for every few minutes of talking. In fact, when I receive a, present, a presenter's deck for a speaker in a conference and, you know, they've got 50 slides for 25 minutes, I go, no. No, no, that's too, that's too many slides. You're not going to get through it. But when you're presenting to video, lots of slides is good because what you want to be doing is flicking through them really quickly so you're creating that TV style effect. And my final tip is your lighting. Um, you know, we had that laugh as I came on and I realised just how bright I was. Um, light your room, light your face. Um, ideally, I would also have a light behind me to just give my room a little bit of depth. Sometimes it doesn't matter when we're sitting at home doing um, our online meetings, people are pretty forgiving of your setup. But when you're creating teaching content, you want it to be as easy and as comfortable to watch as possible. So lighting really does matter. And you'll feel better about it too, because instead of looking sick or pale or whatever, you'll kind of go, oh, yeah, I'm looking all right. Okay. We'll, we'll take that. So there are my tips. I guess I want to finish before we go over to Q&A and a discussion with David is that a reminder that speaking is a skill and it gets better and better with practice. I have been speaking now for 25 years. I have never earned my living, so to speak, as a professional speaker, but I can attribute my entire professional progress my professional wins with being able to command an audience and with being able to speak with confidence and impact. And I keep getting better. When I look back over, when I look back at 10 years ago, I go, oh, I wouldn't have done that. But it's a skill that gets better. So if you do want to keep practicing, then I've got a podcast called Speaking with Confidence. And that will also take you to a little Facebook group as well. But and I'm also always hanging out in the New Zenla group. So that's me.
they're my three plus an extra tip on speaking with confidence and impact. Brilliant, Kat. That was, uh, yeah, that was superb. Uh, lots of interesting um, points there. I've got some questions. Not many people. Um, oh, Tracy's got a question for you. Awesome. Um, how, how do you handle lighting reflect, reflecting in glasses? Uh, Tracy's got um, glasses. And um, I did actually notice that, Tracy. She did a video and she green screened it behind her, but it was actually picking up on the edge of the glasses. So they were kind of going see through. So yeah, right. how, do you, um, how do you avoid that? You can't. Those, my, from my tip, some people actually just make sure they've got matte glass frames. Yeah. Because if you have glossy, they pick up. But so lighting, I've just put, yeah. lighting is challenging with glasses, and I've just put my glasses on, and, yeah, it's, it's not ideal, um, and it is how it is. I actually don't use green screen, to be honest. That's yeah. one of my things, just because I find that that, that creates all of those funny um, edges. Um, that's going to be personal preference. But, yeah, light, lighting is tough. My other thing too is that I deliberately went for a flat light rather than a ring light because I was noticing that ring lights created more reflection and they create that that look in your eye that yeah. makes yeah, it a little I, bit funny. What, what, I, what I found with that is make sure you use a diffused light. Definitely don't have the light pointed directly at you or at yes. an angle. Point it up slightly or down slightly. Definitely yeah. before you come on camera, check it check how you look move your head around and make sure it's not catching any of the light because it's actually the reflection from the light that's causing the reflection <laughs> as it were and does, and, it's off. and does having a backlight help that too i wonder whether if you if it's not as dark in the background particularly if you're green screening you might not get that same reflection yeah that's right yeah backlighting a green screen can be really effective um, yeah. And that's what a lot of pros do to get it really light. Um, I used to have it with this, but this green screen I've got is really good. It's really, really bright green. So I don't need to put a backlight behind it. But before when I first did this, I had to put backlights behind because otherwise yeah. it would pick up reflections from the front. Um, my ring light that I've got here, <clears throat> I've got it set up and it doesn't cast any reflection. You can see that it's really cut out clear. And that's yeah, the right. thing. It's like if you can't set up, if you can't get a nice clean cut on yourself, don't use a green screen like Kat's doing, you know, yeah. because you've got to have a certain amount of technical skill or fiddle around for a while before you do get it perfect. And if you're yeah. if you've got this kind of when you're moving your head, you've got all these things coming out. Don't do it. I wouldn't do it. You know? Don't do it. Yeah, I, I don't think it's worth it. I'm just going to stop sharing my screen because we don't need that anymore, do we? <laughs> we finished yeah we finished yeah so i have some other questions as well so i uh, tracy got another one as well tracy's really active she's a fellow aussie as well awesome so, where are you tracy where in where in ausland are you she, she'll put that she said she tried ring lights and they reflect uh yeah ring lights do because they don't what you want is sort of um you know you can put you can get these lights you can turn they're big I've got a few there, the big diffusing lights. They're really cheap. Yeah, I'll you just quickly up. see if I can. So that's my lighting setup. You can, whoa. Yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. It's a paint. Yeah, oh, so yeah. a big flat, big flat screen, fully adjustable. It's on a tripod. Um, so I can take it quite up and, the, and yeah, I can change the angle. Mm. Yeah, and that's mine as well. I've got, um, it's, on a, it's on a pole. And it's, it's yeah. the camera's in the middle of a ring light. So yeah, you, right. can adjust, you can adjust the ring light and the camera independently. So that yeah, nice. works as well with, um, with a light. So you can turn it up or down, ch change it towards warm or bright yep. blue. So depending yes. on the sun and stuff, you might need to crank it the other way. I also notice the colours on the background, they make a big difference. If I switch to a blue background, my whole colour would change. I wouldn't yeah, change totally. the lighting, just the background. So it's a real art. I mean, that's why it's an art form. But um, yeah, Tracy's also put, um, I do have one up at um, remember the angle. Yeah, so she just forgets to change the angle. Yeah. <laughs> the angle of the light, yeah. So uh, Pauline's put, lighting is something that I'm still working on improving, but so they're technical issues, technical issues. And Tracy's from um, York Peninsula, North Adelaide. Beautiful. Yeah, my, um, my folks are in um, uh, Air, Air Peninsula. So South Australia, but the other side. Oh, yeah, she's in York, York Peninsula. 
Yeah, it's good. Right. OK, so I have some questions for you, Kat, quickly. Hit me. Um, right. So uh, what what would be your top three tips for confidence, getting getting content or getting confidence? Um, so, yeah, I like that. So first of all, breathe, like tr- truly breathe into um, and, and ground yourself. Um, I'm, a, I'm a yogi. I practice yoga. I meditate. So that grounding practice. Um, remind yourself that everyone is faking it and and I do say that I do say this sincerely I have worked with the most senior of politicians you know the people that we hold up in the highest esteem with artists with performers everyone feels like they're faking it so you you don't have to be better than anybody else to be confident you just need to be willing to put yourself out there top three tips for confidence Oh, I'm going to re. I'm going to repeat what I said before. You don't have to be the expert. You just need to be an expert. Remind yourself what it is that you're bringing to this conversation, as distinct to trying to have everything. And be willing to say, "Gee, that's a really interesting question. I don't. I don't know the answer to that." And that that's perfectly fine. Right. Okay. So um, yeah, you, you answered another question I was going to ask you. So. Um, Another good one is like, how do you avoid confrontation? In a live audience setting? Yeah. Or, or online, if someone's chatted online. It could be so there's both. a couple of ways. First of, first of all, um, when I'm beginning with the end in mind, I will anticipate objections. So I'll sit down and kind of think to myself, okay, where's, where are there going to be some likely objections and where might I need to either be willing to have an argument or defend my position. Now, if I can think about that first, then what I can often do is what's called pace out the objections. So an example, an example would be, let's say I'm trying to encourage a team. This is a crap example for this audience, but let's say I'm trying to encourage a team to work extra hours for no extra pay because we need to do something. And so I would say something like, Team, I understand that we're all working really hard and I understand that, you know, everyone just wants a break. And what I'm going to ask you to do is just put in a few extra hours because once we've done this, then we're going to get all of these results and all of these rewards. So I'm pacing out the objections, almost pre-addressing what the concern is going to be. Now, if I still do get a confrontation, if I still do get a question, there's a few things. First of all, it's remembering that most people aren't assholes most people will remember the rules of social engagement and social etiquette and so a confrontation isn't so much a confrontation it's often a request for more information or it's a request um, to understand something a little bit more so I tried but as I'm hearing it I'm in, I'm trying to reframe it very quickly as okay this person's asking for more information I obviously haven't explained it enough if it does get heated, I it depend it depends whether the heat is coming from a legitimate debate perspective in my world or whether it's coming from a I'm going to try and make you wrong. If the person's trying to make me wrong, then I'll just shut it down and go, thanks, that's I'll, I'm going to take that on as a comment. We're just going to agree to disagree. If it's a debate, then I will engage others and say, well, what do others think? What? You know, let, let's have this conversation because, again, the reason I do this particular work is because I actually want more people to be empowered to engage in robust conversation. Um, I, actually, I actually want that to happen. But nine times out of ten, people will remember the rules of social engagement. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. It is something that comes up and it's um, how you handle it. And, yeah. and I think like you were saying, like also practice helps. It's, it's like if you're speaking to people, you got even on camera. I mean, bef- you know, Kat, before I was uh, come on Zendler, I really I didn't need to. But I was always um, I always do my videos. I don't have my little head in the shots because my particular niche does not like my hair. It <laughs> doesn't, like, like, doesn't <laughs> like the look of me. No, it's that's, not that's that decent at all. market yeah. research. No, we yeah. don't like David <laughs> Yeah, I've, I've I've pulled them on it. <laughs> Get off. 
no they it's basically for the um they want to see the whole ui they want to see the yeah. whole screen and my head in the yeah. way of it um causes issues you know yeah so i had a big big debate with udemy saying you need to put your head in there it's going to get more engagement i was like no my audience doesn't want my head in there it was like you know it was it was funny because i know what my audience like but obviously being on zenla you this is part of it it's being on camera yeah. is part of it so like it or don't like it you you know you have to do it i think so, so. and it and it's practice it's like you were saying earlier like the more you do it the better you get and what i loved you saying cat was like you'll never you never know it all there's always something to learn there's always a getting better now what really riles me are these people that think they don't need to learn anything new because they're doing it all right and it's like nobody is like you said nobody knows it yep. all you know? no one knows it all and, yeah. and 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 nobody nobody wants to learn from somebody who thinks they know it all like the there's there's no there's no rapport in learning from someone who thinks they've got all the answers like that 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 is the biggest turn off full stop so mm. yeah like be humble Sh yeah. share share your story and um you own own your expertise at the same time as acknowledging acknowledging I don't have all of the answers but I've got a fair few so yeah. you know let's travel together yeah absolutely and it's like you you know you also got to remember where you are you know where you were and where you are because that's another big thing because that's the connection with people that are where you were from you know absolutely. those people that are trying to learn these things are like i don't know anything about this and you were there at one stage you can be like you can be gentle and light with them when you're approached to teaching them because it's like it's, you must you must be sympathetic you can't i've done many courses where i've had really really great um sculptors and artists and they've forgotten where they were from so they were talking really technical and going through things really quickly when it was supposed to be a kind of beginner intermediate class yeah. they were talking as if you had been working in a studio for the last 20 years and professional you know just going straight into it and it was like a lot of people I mean lucky I, I've been doing it a long time so I was keeping up but a lot of people were like I can't follow this the, the guy I don't know no. what he's talking about was and, and it, it, I've been paying like you know thousands of dollars to do this you know and a beginner's and mind is really important uh my my eldest son has just started to learn to drive he's just got his learners and um you know nothing the, talk about reminding yourself of beginner's mind you know like We've, we've been driving for 25 years plus, and then you go, right, how do, I, how do I chunk this down for somebody who has never sat in the driver's seat of a car so they can understand it? So it's you, you can't just say there's a steering wheel, there's the accelerator, there's the brake, there's the clutch. You've actually got to chunk it all the way back to this is what this part does. So, and for me, it's the same, it's the same in teaching. You, you have to chunk it back to, um, in fact, there's a beautiful model. Um, I can't remember what the actual model is called, but it's the four steps of competence. So, you know, the first stage of learning is unconscious incompetence. We don't know that we don't know. So a five-year-old doesn't know that he can't drive, but a 16-year-old who's just starting to know, he's actually moved into conscious incompetence he knows that he doesn't know how to drive the next step then is when we're really consciously thinking about every move which is conscious competence so you know we're consciously moving the wheel putting on the indicator taking the foot off the brake putting the you know that's conscious competence and then the fourth stage is unconscious competence the stuff that we do in our sleep automatically you know if i asked you how to drive or how you pulled into your driveway you'd actually have to think about it for a second because so much it, it is literally unconscious and so most of us in zenla would be teaching what is unconscious competence for us we it is mastery for us that's why we're teaching it but we have to remember that our audience is all the way back by definition they're obviously a conscious incompetence they've put their hand up and said i know that i don't know how to do this so we've got to chunk it all the way back to that first level of learning 
Yeah, no, that's that's beautifully put. And that's another thing that's quite hard sometimes, like doing the day with Zen or even doing the workshops, because you've got lots of people at different levels. Mm -hmm. And although you try to break it out, try to say it's a beginners or it's for everybody, I always try and do every I always try and do everything for for beginners, even if it's an advanced subject, because then they're coming into it. So it's thinking in that way as well, rather than just jumping into an advanced thing. And it becomes hard sometimes. It's like, I know people have said, like, when we run our office hours, like, why are you running through the tutorial thing every week? Well, it's like, there's new people, you know, they, they don't know where this stuff is. So it's kind yeah, of like, and- yeah, but you do it every week. And it's like, yeah, but there's new people, you know, you end up going in this big kind of circle, but you have to mention it because it's such an important part. There's people coming in that maybe they've been using the platform for three, six months, and they don't even know where the tutorial stuff is. And we like spend- me, I've been, I've been using it for 15 months. I didn't know where half of that stuff was that you were talking about. Oh, really? I was like, holy moly, who knew? But there you go. That I've is- just been making it up as I go along. I've just been going, oh, yeah, <laughs> do this, do that. Well, lots more, lots more stuff for you to look at. Um, yeah, exactly. Right. Have we got we've got Pauline saying, yeah, you never stop learning. Um, Tracy Browning likes the clarification of the topic. So that was that's brilliant. Um, yeah, I think oh, one last thing I wanted to ask you, Kat, was so with with slides, are you saying with the uh, your brain can only take in like the, um, you know, uh, two, so three things on the screen. So you're saying with slides that we should only really be featuring um, not showing more than kind of three things at a time on a slide. Do you think like pepper so no hard, slide it is too much? Yeah, so look, no hard and fast rules, but understand that, understand how the, the human mind works. In my ideal world, your slides would be pictures more than they are words. If you're purely and simply delivering bullet points on a slide, then why are you talking? Because they can read that too. Um, I made it a couple of exceptions today where I put in quotes that I read as I went because I wanted to make those key points. Um, it's not so if if you're oh, step back up a notch and again using the driving example. So when you think about the seven plus or minus two chunks of information, for an unconsciously competent driver, the whole concept of driving is one chunk for you. You can put your indicator on, stop at the stop sign, brake, accelerate, manage all of that as one chunk of information. But a learner driver, indicator, one chunk. Stop sign, two chunks. Accelerator, three chunks. Brake, four chunks. For an, for an unconsciously competent driver like yourself, as soon as additional information comes in, so the phone rings, the kids are asking for something and you get extra input, extra inputs, then if there was an unexpected truck coming across your path, then you've got too many chunks of information. So from a PowerPoint perspective or from a slide perspective, if the points that you've got on your slide are all part of one concept like driving, that is going to make sense to your audience, then you can have 10 points on there because they're just going, oh, yep, I'm I'm absorbing all of that at once and it all makes sense. But if you're trying to deliver new information, if 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 your audience is not unconsciously competent in that frame, then you want to go slower and you want to to build or layer the information. But, again, I'm a big fan of your, your slides. Your slides should be supporting what you're saying not doing what you're saying or not saying what you're saying. Yeah. So it should, you know, a little brief bit of information and then you can say that, but you expand on that. So it just gives Correct. you, it's almost like, it's almost like you don't need a notepad then underneath where you're picking up points because you're just using the slide as a way of triggering your response. So you Correct. can then talk about it. So that's really interesting. Interesting points. I will start to employ that in some of the slides that I'm doing. So it's good. Awesome. Never stop learning, Kat. Never stop learning. Yep. Right. Just empowered okay. you to make an even bigger dent in the universe, didn't I? <laughs> I'll try. Oh, God, it's coming up to 11 now. So uh, that's, <laughs> that's pretty it's amazing, isn't it? Because I could talk about this thing all day. I really could. But it's so good, Kat. Um, so, guys, if you are interested in finding out a little bit more about um, Kat's work, um, an amazing presentation she just did. 
you can check out her, her site here at impactful, impactfulpresenters.com. I'll put that in the chat anyway. So you, I'm sure you don't mind, do you, if people reach out to you? Not at all. So um, people Just, will reach out. And, and I'm happy to take all the tips about how to set up my page in Zenla better because, as I said, I made it all up as I went along. <laughs> Well, you know, like, because I'm now doing the live workshop Sundays, I'm doing them yes. for you guys. So, you know, Thank it's you. like um, they were much later, so you couldn't really join. So now they're in the morning. So it'll be in the evening for you guys. So hopefully I'll have all this, all the Southern Hemisphere coming on online. Gosh. <laughs> all of us Aussies. Yeah, it's going to be chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah, mate, it will be. <laughs> That's lovely. Thank you so much, Kat, for doing that presentation. Um, yeah, if you keep an eye on the chat, there might there probably be some questions coming. People watch this on replay as well. So they might no message worries. you and ask you, um, you know, to expand on something if you would. Easy mind. peasy. Brilliant. Easy. Thank you for having me on. It was That's good all right. <laughs> all right. I'll see you later. We're going to move on with the subjects now. Catch you later. See ya. See you later. Bye. Bye. Okay, guys, so um, brilliant one there. Lovely little slot um, that was running till 10.45. So we've got an hour. So the next slot is covering um, certificates. Now, you saw earlier that I did um, a, I showed you the tutorial site and we saw those SVG um, files in there. So I thought, what I thought I'd do is I'd show you how to go in there and how to edit it. Now, it's already in the course anyway, but it's always good to do this stuff live. So then you guys can see and I can see if there's any questions in the chat. So uh, I'm going to be screen sharing in a second. And uh, I'm just jumping into the dashboard so I can take you through. I need to open a few windows up because one, I'm going to be editing the certificate. I'm going to be loading the certificate into a course and then I'm going to be going in there as a student to download it and check it. All right. So um, if you guys want to get to where the certificates are, you can go to log into NZ Mastercast bundle at tutorials.newzenda.com. Go down to the Zenda extras, go into our little theme packs and you're going to see down here that we have our certificates. So uh, if you're going to be editing a certificate, there's a couple of things that you need that I show in these tutorials. One is you need to install a program called Inkscape. And you probably, if you're using these certificates and want to keep these fonts, you need to install a font called Alex Brush. So I've given you the fonts in here and I've told you how to install the font and Inkscape in this video here. So you can watch that if you're interested. And you can install, you can go to the link for Inkscape by clicking here, which will bring up Inkscape, choose the platform, download, install, done. And the font pack is a zip file there, which I show how to install. So once you have those on the system, then you can kind of follow along with what I'm doing next. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take one of these certificates and we're going to modify it. So, I want to, for instance, choose one of these. I'm going to go and choose this one here. Okay, in the tutorial, I think I did this one. So I'm going to choose this one here. So I'm going to click download and that's going to download a zip file. Do you see it down there? It's just popped up. So I'm going to go now and I'm going to open that in a folder. So I'm going to show that in a folder and it's accessed my download folder. Okay, which is there, there it is. Let me just delete these out to keep it clean. So it's a zip file, it's a zip file. So what I wanna do now is I want to take this zip file and I wanna extract it. So there's two ways to do it. You can open it up and drag it across to the desktop or you can right hand click, this is with PC and you can extract all. You're gonna get a little box come up like that. I'm gonna extract it to the same place, download folder. I'm just gonna hit extract, it's gonna set up another folder. If I close that down, you can see that's what it's done. It's basically extracted that folder out. So I can delete this one out now because I don't need it. We're going to check what's in this folder. So you can see in here, it says certificate template one.svg, which actually lines up with this. Okay. So if you download this one, it will be certificate template two, et cetera, et cetera. So now I've got that SVG file. 
and it's in my download folder. I'm going to use Inkscape to go in and change it. And then we're going to upload it to a course and test it as a student. So let's jump into Inkscape. All right, two seconds, it should be opening. Here it is. All right, so this is Inkscape by default. Okay. Now this is the wrong size, but we're gonna use that template that we've got in our download folder. And we are going to put that into here. So we're gonna open it. So I'm gonna to go to file, I'm gonna go open, and we're gonna locate the file, file. So it's on my, downloads folder, certificate template, SVG. And I'm gonna click, notice a little preview, click open. And there it is there. So inside Inkscape, we have the ability to change colors. So if you can see our little color range down the bottom, and I was asked if we, by Tracy Brind, if we could change the color to a hexadecimal color, um, down here but i'm going to show you in a second at the moment this is our colors that we're going to use so up here we have some different tools and you don't need to use too many in here if you're just modifying this uh, this template a little bit then you don't need to um, do a lot of changes if you're just making some minor changes so i'm going to click in here and this is going to give me this now you'll notice i can move it around so if I wanted to, I could delete it out. There you go, it's a nice plain certificate. But if I've got it selected by using the little arrow key and then clicking, I can come down here and I can choose a new color. Like that, really easy. Now I can also click on this area and you can move it. And I can change colors inside here as well. So if I double click, and you can use the little magnifying glass or you can use the plus key on your keyboard to zoom in. Press the space bar and you're able to move around and then you need to let go of the space bar to stop. So watch what happens if I use the arrow, arrow key there and I click a couple of times. It's gonna give me different areas because this image has been created and we created this for you. You can actually go in and you can change the color on certain things. Sometimes it's a little bit hit and miss. You have to kind of just go in, click it, and then you can change it. So I'm going to change it to something like a darker color like this. And then I'm going to select this middle color in here. So I'm going to click in there. You can just, that's not, that's for the outer piece. So I want to click that one there and I can change the color like that. Really easy inside here. I could go to the text tool and I could go change the wording. Yeah, I could also change the font type up here. So if I want to change it to, and this is right, this is really important, guys. There's certain fonts inside here because you've got loads of fonts that will not work properly. So just there are a few, there's probably lots that do work, but you might need to test it. Okay, so wait till we get to the testing phase. But the fonts that, that I would say do work is Arial, Times, Blasium, if, Blasium, Pacifico, or Alex Brush, if you've put those, loaded those fonts on. You can see Alex Brush is here. So I know Arial works, I don't know Alex Brush. Also Times, which is a nice font as well. So if I choose, if I type in here times new Roman, you're going to see it's going to come up and it's going to change down here. So if I select part of this text, I can also increase the font size here. So this is at 45 at the moment. If I was to make it 56, it would be bigger down here. And you notice that you can change it the size as well, different settings. And I've just selected that text. So this is how you can easily go in and edit this stuff. Like if I don't like this background stuff here, I want to change the color. I could, I can delete it out completely, which is what I've done. 
I'm going to use the minus key on the keyboard to zoom out. And you can also press five on the keyboard, numeric number five, and it frames it like that. OK, so change this straight away to change where this goes. So I'm going to make this a little bit different from this. I'm going to take this top one and I'm going to get rid of it. And I'm now going to be using another tool. So underneath layers here, I have all my all my bits on this layer. So you're working from this base template. OK, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer down here. So I'm going to click create new layer. I'm going to say below current layer. Now, why have I done that? Because layers are like stacking orders. Imagine a, a piece of paper as the bottom layer where this text is on. Imagine putting tracing paper on the top with something on it and then another piece on top of that. That is the order of stacking. So if you take something on the top and you put it underneath, you might not see it because it's underneath the other layer. So we build up an image using layers. And this is pretty common in most programs, primarily Illustrator and Photoshop were the first to kind of develop this stacking system and other companies have employed it. So if I go below current layer, it's gonna put a layer below. So I'm gonna click add, and you're going to see that it's appeared below it, below here. OK, and close that up. That's the top layer. So I also want to drag it out. Because you can change the order of these as well. That's actually wrong. I'm going to go Control Z. And I'm just not going to click that layer. Let's do this below. OK, that's it. I didn't want it under the stacking order. So there it's on there. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this little rectangle. I'm going to click the rectangle. I'm going to go right from the edge, and go a little bit over. I'm going to drag this out just, to, just over the edge. And you'll notice it's underneath. Now I could change the color of this. So I'm going to change it to something like a gray. Now I'm going to click this bit of text a couple of times and then I'm going to make it white. I can click this one in here, double click it, move it down. I can maybe choose this one here, move it into there. And I'm creating a completely different look. Now, one thing to definitely take note of is these little variable tags. These variable tags are what we will bring in from the system. So the school name, whatever your name is. So if it was Surf Dudes, it would say Surf Dudes. The other one is the student that's downloading the actual PDF. It will pull their names from their profile. So it will put their name in there. It will also pull in the name of the course that the certificate's been added to. So these are variables. They pull in data from other places. And the same goes for the completion date. So when they finish the course, the completion date will be automatically filled and the school name. So it is really important if you change these or delete any of this stuff out, then they will not work. So you need to make sure that they are um, in that format. And I'll be showing you where you can get this information from inside the site. But we've created a brand new template now. Of course, you can go a little bit mad with this. I can take this, I can press Control C, Control V, copy it. And then I could say, right, okay, I want to choose a lighter gray. I'm going to use this little handle to make a little line. And then I'm going to bring it up here and just kind of fix it on there like that. So you can create this different look going across. And I could also put use circles in here as well. So if you wanted to create a kind of circle behind there and put text inside it, you could do that. And the, the text tool is here. So if I was to put extra type in here, just put extra type. Yeah, you could then go into here. You can make that type bigger. You could change it to like normal, change the color down here if you wanted to. You can change the font type down here. Let's put this into Alex Brush. So you got that in Alex Brush or Times or any of the other ones, Arial. So that's pretty easy to work with. Um, and what I've found with Inkscape is it actually keeps everything really quite um, locked into where it is. So unlike 
I used Boxy last time to do this and it was a bit of a pain. It didn't work as expected. So Inkscape is definitely a step ahead. It creates a very good representation of this um, certificate. So now I've done this, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save it as. I'm going to go save as. I've got a certificate. We're going to test it now. So I'm going to call this, let's call it live one SVG. I've saved it in the same folder. I'm going to actually save it in my downloads folder. And I'm going to click save. So now we need to test this in the system, make sure it's worked. And this is how you can edit it. So if you want to go in and re-edit this afterwards, you can go in, open that file up, make some changes, save it as, and re-repeat the process that I'm going to show you now. So I'm going to stop my screen share while I just set up uh, the rest of the stuff I need to set up. So I'm going to go to my site for testing. So let's go to... And then I can share my screen again. Right now I'm setting up the page. I'm going to screen share in a second. I've just got to set these up. Uh, then I can go in and show you. But you can see how easy it was just to make those edits to that. It doesn't have to be hard work to do it. You can have a bit of fun with it and get some completely original certificates. Right. Okay, let's screen share again and I'll show you. Right, so I'm in my site, I'm in Surf Dudes. So the first thing I need to do is I need to put my certificate I just created, I need to put it into the system. So I'm gonna to go to courses, gonna go down to certificates down here on the left hand side, and I'm going to add a certificate. You notice I've already got one in here. I'm gonna add a new one. So let's go add a certificate. Let's call it live one. Choose the file, go and find the file, which is in my downloads folder. And it's called live one. There it is. I'm going to click open and click add. And there we go. So let's just preview this. So there it is. That is a custom certificate created in minutes. Now I need to choose the course that it's going to be applied to. So I'm going to come into courses. And if I want this course here to have that certificate, I'm going to go into that course. I'm going to go to course details going to make sure that enable certificate is turned on and then I'm going to click in this box scroll down to the live one there it is click update and it's ready so let's test this so to test it as a student I've set myself up as a student on this site so I've gone into student you notice I'm in there as a student. So all I did was add myself as a user. Then I went to edit. Then I went to courses. And then I went and I enrolled myself in the course. So you can see I'm in there. Okay. So let's jump into Incognito where I'm actually logged in. So I'm logged in as that user. So I'm going to go to my courses. And you're going to see it here. I'm going to click in here. And you'll see that I've completed need to complete the course so with this particular one i just set this course up to test certificate so it's just one lesson in there so that way i could do the lesson and download the certificate to see it so i'm going to click download your certificate and if all goes well i should have the name of the school i should have the date i finished i should have all the details in there pulled from my bio or my account so here it is here. I'm going to go into its downloaded PDF. I'm going to go show in folder. We're going to jump across to here. And here it is. And I'm going to open this up. And fingers crossed, it's all going to work. Yep, absolutely. So we've pulled in Surf Dudes, the name of the school. We've pulled in me as the user. And we've pulled in the course that I was enrolled in and the certificate is for. We've also got the completion date and the name of the school all inside there. Now. I put school in here. Originally, I would have this as signature. So if you want to, if you're editing the certificate, and this is a really cool thing to do, is to put instructor where it says school now, and then maybe upload your own um, 
signature and put it in there. Um, I would make sure that it's a dummy signature. Never use your own signature when you're putting things online just because of people being able to um, make it, you know, copies of it, steal your identity and things like that. So always use a dummy signature or do something that's completely different. Just a little tip for you. See, a lot of people use that actual signature. It's not a good idea sometimes. Yeah. So um, put it in there, put signature down there, and then you're going to get the signature appearing in there, the date they finished and all the other data that's brought in. So that is how easy it is to create custom certificates. You know, um, you don't need to buy anything extra. You can use Inkscape. It's really simple to use. There's also a lot of things you can do in Inkscape. And I would have a look. By default, I use Illustrator. I'm really used to using Illustrator. You can do amazing things with it. Um, I know it inside out. Uh, this is a free version, if you like, of kind of Illustrator, but it doesn't do half the things Illustrator does, but it does some amazing things. One thing I was playing around with it, and I noticed that if you click like one of the solid blocks, like if I was to create a solid block like this, uh, what you can do is you can, you can actually create a gradient, which I didn't know. So if I go, went to something like this dark gray, uh, there's a little tool here and it's a gradient tool. If I click it and then I click here and I drag across, you can form a gradient. I mean, that's pretty cool. So I can, it's sampling that first color, that gray I picked, and then going across to there. So that's where the gradient finishes. So if I want to change this color, I can click in here and choose that color. And then if I want to make that a different color, I can click in there and I can make that a different color. So now I've got a lovely gradient running that I can move around. So, I mean, that's pretty good. So I'm going to use, do a few more certificates where I've got that. So if I use this gradient in here, I could pull this across and then I could do something like really dark at the end and then maybe much lighter on this end and you can get a really cool effect. You know, you can also got inside here, I've selected this block. You've also got filters. So filters are pretty good as well. You've got different effects you can apply. Um, You've also got transparency as well that you can add. And I'm trying to find one that's going to be good. Shadows, oh, shadows and glows. So I can do a drop shadow. So I'm not seeing it working. Maybe it doesn't work. Inner outer oh, that's strange maybe it'll work on here let me try some text sometimes these drop shadows only work with text let's put it into a red okay i'm gonna go to filter No, maybe I'm doing something wrong. But they do have these um, these effects that you can use, which are pretty good when they're working, when you work out how they all work. You've got things like bevels in here, blurs. Um, you can change the transparency of things down here. So if I choose this one, for instance, I can change this transparency, make it opaque. See that? That's being applied to the whole layer. Notice it's the whole layer that I've got selected. If I chose that one, it would be for the whole layer. And you can also blur it as well. So if I hit blur here, oh no. So some once you get used to this, I think there's some powerful features that you can use in it. They've got things like pen tools, draw tools, rotate tools, fill, um, spray, arrays existing path. Um, you can measure things in here as well. You've also got this. I don't know how this would help you, but could be quite good. You can change the turns as well that make a kind of spiral. So you can really have a bit of fun with this. And the inner radius as well, I guess that would make it bigger. And then if you don't like it, 
you just click in that area, delete it out, and you've got your certificate. So that is how to kind of use Inkscape, how to take existing templates that those six templates we've already got in there, how to take them into Inkscape, make your modifications, delete out the bits you don't want, add bits in, and create a brand new custom template in minutes. Now, also remember that you could add your own logo as well. So if I want to add my own logo in here, I'm just going to find my logo, um, which should be around somewhere. And then I'm going to check the chat because I'm sure there'll be some questions on this. So I'm going to go and grab, I think, um, the, I've got a break dancing logo that I think I'll use that. There it is there. Okay, let me share my screen. So I've got a, I've got a little logo here. It's a transparent PNG. So I'm going to take that logo. I'm going to drag it into here. I'm just going to click OK. And there we go. Got my own logo in here now. So I could take this certificate, double click that. Move it across to here. Take my little break dance. Oops. And put my logo in there. So yes, you can put images in here. I think there was a post someone put on the group saying you couldn't actually use images in here, but you can. You can just drag them straight in. So if you want to use another image inside there, you could. Let me just go and grab another image inside here. So I've got this big wallpaper in here. I'm going to choose that, drag it in. Click OK. It's going to be big, this image. And there you go. And of course, if I cut that, I'm going to press the minus key on the keyboard. I'm going to bring the size of this down. Oops. And I'm going to put it on its own layer. So I'm taking it now, I'm cutting it, Control X. And I'm going to go in here, I'm going to add a new layer below because I want it below everything else. And I click add and I make sure I'm on that layer. I'm going to press control V to paste it back in. And with a bit of luck, it should pop back. There it is. So let's put that in here. Notice it's going underneath the other. So I'm going to put it in there. And then I'm going to change the opacity. And there we go. A completely different certificate within a few minutes. So you can use images inside there. Uh, again, definitely go in and test it. Make sure it's all working. You're not getting funny results. Uh, make sure your images are in RGB as well. Most of the time they will be. Like I said, put them in there, output the certificate, and then test it in the system. Make sure it's all working. So uh, there we go. That's certificates for you. So I'm going to jump to the chat because there might be some questions going on. So can one of Adobe products do the same thing? Yes, Tracy, uh, um, Adobe Illustrator can do the same thing. That's what I use. So there we have it. Right, so that was quick. That was on certificates. So I want to tell you now where you can get more information on certificates. Now, you know, you can go into the NZ Masterclass bundle. And we also have a link on there to um, further training, which you can find on our YouTube channel. So I want to jump across to the YouTube channel just so you guys know where it is. And it's youtube.com forward slash C forward slash Zenla. So if I go to YouTube. And we show that now. Okay, youtube.com forward slash C forward slash sender. And if we scroll down to the bottom down here, you're going to find a live workshop, which is designing your own certificates. So I ran this as a live workshop. It's running for just over an hour. And we go into a lot of detail with uh, stuff you can do inside here. We build a certificate from scratch inside here. And you can see I've used um, an actual 
image and pulled bits in. I show you how you can use it with things like um, Canva, uh, Pixabay, and of course, Inkscape. And we put them all together. So it's like it's covering everything, really. So what you're seeing when you go to the theme packs and those installation videos is very basic, is how to edit those particular templates. But watching this video will show you how to actually create your own custom one from scratch, all right, as opposed to using a template for a base. So hopefully that's uh, been of interest for you. Um, we're coming up to the last sort of half an hour. So I'm actually going to stop, have a little bit of a break for about five minutes, be back at 11.30. We are running in. If there's any questions, please put the questions in and then I'll answer them in the last half an hour. If we haven't got any questions, I'm going to jump into just showing you a few little tips on Zenla, on the platform itself. So I will be back at 11.30. And if there's any questions, I'll answer them. So please get your questions in. Um, if you've got any questions on how to use anything, any new features that we brought out, uh, how anything works on the platform, please put your questions in there. That's why we're here. Uh, we're going to finish at 12 on the dot. And then we come back at three. That's three hours later. And we will then run through some more things. We've got Zelissa on, we've got Alice on. I'm running through funnels. So we're going to do a real in-depth look at funnels. Plus, of course, answer your questions as well. Because we are here for you all day with a day with Zendler. And uh, yeah, I'll just um, going to have a quick uh, break uh, for five minutes. I'll be back at 11.30 and we'll continue with the fun. But write your questions in um, and I will answer them on my return. So back at 11.30.
Hello, guys. Right. Uh, coming into the last half an hour before we leave, there are a few questions coming earlier. So I'm going to just uh, run through uh, some of those pretty quick. There was a lot of uh, questions on lighting setup. Um, so what I would say is jump into our uh, tutorials uh, .new .site. I'll just show it. And uh, you're going to find that we have actually lots of information on this already. So I'm going to jump in there and show you. So lighting. All right. So lighting is a big one, like how to get the lighting right. I know Tracy was saying with glasses. Glasses can be kind of quite hard to um, get the lighting right. But it's like if you haven't got the light, if you haven't got the light hitting the glass, it's not going to reflect. So if it can be aimed up or sideways, or you can get what's called diffusers. It's like tracing paper um, and you can put it over it and it diffuses the lights and it breaks the light down. You don't get so much reflection, just a little tip. But if you come into the Zenless Extras, uh, you're gonna find in there that we have a course called Hardware Setup. So inside here, this tells you about different things that you can do. So one is my hardware. So if I go into this uh, lesson here, you're going to see that um, I've given you a little video on setup inside here. And also I give you a little bit of a display. This is this setup. Uh, now I haven't got the light behind here, but you can backlight it. That works really effectively. And I've included a little um, embedded. This was all done in Zenla. Yeah, well, this was actually a, um, a program I use, but I've embedded the code to create this. And you can basically go around this little setup and just see exactly how that's set up. As you can see, my microphone is that side, my ring light with my little Brio cameras in there. And this can be independently adjusted from the webcam, which can be set up and down. As you've got my little camera there picked up um, just off the shot, but you can see it. Little light at the back and my green screen hanging there. And obviously it wouldn't be, keep it as straight as you can. And then you sit there and notice the distance. Uh, if you can have a little bit of distance behind it, it doesn't throw shadow from you, from this light onto the green screen. But as we've got the backlight behind it, it's uh, stopping that shadow from forming. It's like neutralizing that front light and backlight. This is a very simple setup. Um, and uh, you can see that you could also set up a three light setup as well, which is photographers use when they have a cam, they have a light here, here and one here on the top facing down. So there's lots of different um, setups you can use. You can just Google, use Google, it's your friend. So go on there and find light setups for studio shots or green screen and there'll be a ton of stuff come up for you. So that is um, light settings in there and you can find that in the hardware software course which I show all the software I use and stuff. So next question I have was a bit far up the um, chat. So I think, no, I can't see the chat line now. So again, if you've got any questions, just drop them in there. I'm just going to check Facebook um, quickly, see if the chat's coming on the on the other link. You're all quite quiet today. Right, yeah, can't see any questions in there. So no questions. So 11.36, remember we're back at three. So um, on the second session, you know, put your questions in or write it down on a piece of paper. And as soon as I come on, if you can't stay for like the whole day with Zenda, then you can always just uh, put them into the chat, you know, just copy and paste them in there. Then you can go out and then check the chat line afterwards, or check the video and you should see it in there. Now, all these day resenders, they do get uploaded to our YouTube channel as well. So they're on our YouTube channel for you guys that have missed any of these recordings and are watching it. So what I wanna do now is uh, just wanna go in and maybe have a little play around with the page builder. Because as you know, the page builder is our 
kind of um, area that you can drag and drop. It's a true drag and drop editor. Um, unlike a lot of platforms, we actually worked a lot to get it so that you can drag and drop things around and intuitively have stuff settings come out as a pop-up from the side so they don't distract you from what you're trying to achieve. So if you've never used the page editor, maybe you're new to this, then um, this might be of interest to you to show you how kind of things work. So I'm gonna go in and set up, I'm gonna sort of show you best practices when you're playing around with your site, especially if you've got your site in a kind of order. Now this site is all ready, it's a working site. Okay, it's actually drawing leads in as we speak. There is no courses yet with this. It's just I'm just generating leads that I can then um, inform people about later. So the site is all working. If I go to the site, uh, you're going to see what we've got. We've basically just got a page where people can register their interest and they're all tagged. So this is the page. It tells you what it's going to be. It's going to be a membership site and people can jump into here. I should show this in incognito really because... I'm actually in the site here. So this is the site here. You can see it says launching soon. Got a little chat um, box pop up from Messenger, which you can close down. And then you've got all these registrations. So these are free inline forms. When someone fills their name and their email address, they click join us. With this particular form and any of the forms throughout this site at the moment, they tag people. So I know that this one has been tagged as pre-launch and this one down here is pre-launch too. So I know exactly where they've come. I'm not using um, Facebook Pixel. I'm not actively marketing this course in any way. I just want to see if people are finding it um, through just organic traffic. So it's coming through this. I've started some videos, done some blog posts on here to drive um, people to the site so if i go through this site you're going to see i've changed the word news to blogs so if you go into news section you can see some of the blogs that i've created here to drive people through so if i go into this little blog here you can see i've got a video so it's a vlog and then i've got links within here going to some of the posts inside and i've also got download in here as well and people can sign up here it's not a proper sign up form. I've deleted the registration form and I've just put an inline form. This particular one tags them as pre launch four, I think. And then I know exactly that they've come to that page. So they've found, they've actually signed up through the sign up form. And I know that because I can see their tags in my list. Um, also, inside this site, I've done free stuff as well. So all of these drive people to funnels. So if they want the top 10 surfing trip, tips they can click in here and it will drive them into a funnel now we're doing funnels this afternoon so i'll be showing you how to do that they can register in there and then they can go and grab the free pdf which is actually sent to them via email we'll be talking about all this later and the automations that you can set inside here as well so this is this site here so setting up these blocks like this is really easy guys so i'm going to jump in and just show you how we can kind of set these sort of blocks up so I'm going to jump back to the site and we have um, a page. I'm just going to set a blank page up and do this. OK, let's go and create a new page. I'm going to click add. I'm going to go test two. I'm not going to publish the page, you know, good idea not to publish the page while you're working on a page, only when you're finished. So we can create the URL for this. So whatever's at the end of the URL. So in this case, I'm going to call it test two. You would probably make that SEO, you know, SEO'd properly. So if it was something like you were targeting the word like learner to surfer or something, you could put learner to surfer in there as a URL and learner to surfer in as that. So I'm going to do it as a blank page. You can see here we have pages visible for all users or only for logged in users. So if you've got only for logged in users, only if they've registered and they've logged in, will they get access to that page? Otherwise they won't. Um, so I'm going to do it for all users. Going to leave it unpublished. That's that. I'm going to click add. So let's create a simple block with some nice sky in the background or a little bit of my local beach, similar to this here. Yeah. 
really easy. So you do have pre-made blocks inside of Zenless. So you guys that you know haven't got any sort of design skills, you've got all these kind of blocks that you can use. We're going to be building one from scratch. That's how I do things. I do it from scratch. Now we've already got a one block in there already, but just to make this absolutely clear, I'm going to delete it out. So when you create that new add a page, you get a new block. So I'm going to go in blocks and I go to empty block. And inside here, I'm going to drag this and I can drag it where I want it. True drag and drop. Once I'm inside there, I can then set the background color and a tint. In this case, I'm going to go for a kind of nice picture and give it a kind of orange tint. So if I want to set this background color in here, I can just go in here and set it. I can also go to background image, click in the background image, select one of my images. You can see all the stuff that I've put into this site. So I'm going to choose a nice one of our beach there. So I've got a nice sky beach. I can also say the position of the image. At the moment, it's, it's top left. So imagine your image, it's top left. It's pulling out from that side. Yeah. If you did it from bottom middle, it would pull up from the middle. That would be where it's from. So you can change that image position. If I go down here, and I just put center center, it's going to give me a completely different look. And I can also grab here. Notice there's a hundred, you've got this hundred pixel um, height that it puts in there. And if you click inside that area, you can make it bigger or smaller. So it allows you to accurately place where you want things to go. So I can put it in there like that, like that looks really nice. But if I put text in here, especially if it's like black or something, it wouldn't show up on here. If Even if it was white, it wouldn't show up. So sometimes you might want to select the block in here, go to settings, and then just give it a tint behind it. So you've got this thing called background overlay. So I'm going to turn that on. It's going to say, what overlay color do you want to use? And then it's also going to say overlay opacity. So I'm going to choose the first one, which is going to be an orange. You can see it's gone orange. Now, maybe that's too much, and I want to dial it back. So I can dial it back there by just changing it. If I put it all the way up here, it will go solid. So you can see I've got a percentage of I can switch it back. It gives you real control. So now I'm going to put in a nice heading for this. So I'm going to go in here and create a row. So this is the blue block we're working on. Inside every blue block, you have a green block, which is a row. And then inside that, you have red elements. So an element would be text, it might be a video, it might be an image. So it's brought up the rows. We can choose different column amounts in the row. And by the way, we can also add a column in. We're not stuck, we're not locked with these. So for instance, if I choose one row, one column, and you'll see it now, see there's a green block in there, which wasn't there before, that's the row. So if I wanted to create another column inside this row, I could click this block and I could right hand click in here and I could go add a new column and bang, I've got a new column. And that little column you can drag. So you can set it to different widths. You can also right hand click in here and delete that column and delete and it's gone back. So you're not stuck with picking one of those ones and then having nowhere to go and then having to change it you can actually go in and delete out and add rows and move them back and forwards which is a lifesaver so i'm going to go in here and choose add and now we're adding an element by the way so you'll notice that i'm clicking here to do this but in zenla there's always a couple of ways to do everything so you'll also notice that up here we have elements and if i go into one of these element settings in this case a heading I can click this and I can drag it into here. So another way of doing it, so you can see it's come up in my default branded font, which is Pacifico. I'm now gonna click the settings for this and I'm gonna make this text a bit bigger because it's a bit small. So I'm gonna go up to about 65 here and I'm gonna change it to a white, like so. And now I can change the text in here and call it beginner's guide to surfing and then I can add another one underneath so I'm going to do it the other way now I'm going to click in here and I'm going to go and grab maybe a text so I'm going to click the text drag it into here there it is again you've got this little settings tab 
This is common through everything. What you're seeing here is the basis for building everything inside Zenla. So whether you're doing lives, when you're doing pages for your live webinars or live classes, you'll still have access to the page builder when you go into the pages. When you go into things like funnels, again, it's familiar because it's using the page builder. So we kept it all the same. So it's really nice and easy for you guys to um, just learn one thing and then make that work for everything else. So I'm gonna change this to like 25. So you can have nice big, you can change the font here. And let's go into something like Leto, like that. And of course you can change it in higher and you can go launching very soon. You see, so you see how quick we can create that. Now we can also have buttons. So if you've got other pages set up, you're going to send them to a funnel. You know, you'll have the funnel URLs and you can send people to it. And we'll look at that a bit later in session two. But we can create but buttons in here easily. We can click this little plus. And there's a lot of things we can create. We can do headings. We just looked at headings. We can create different types of forms. We can create buttons. We can drop images in here. We can drop video in here got some video already loaded I think inside here we can also create lists create a text block which you saw we can create different icons we can have countdown timers and countdown timers to at the end of the count they will redirect people to where you want them to go you can even put html in here so if you guys that like coding and stuff and putting code into pages you can put html straight into there as well and we're going to start with button just look at the options for buttons so i'm going to click buttons and then i'm going to click button bang it goes in there now it's a bit wide this button and it's because it's done it full length when i mean full length it's done full length to the block so if i click settings here and we go right down to the bottom you're going to see that it says width full width and i want to make it normal so i'm going to click in there it's going to shorten it all down We've also got a background color and a border color. We can change all of these things in here and you can change the font in there and the font size as well, the font color. We can also put spacing top, bottom. If you wanna push it a little bit away from that, you can push this dial and you're interactively seeing exactly what's going on screen. Now over here under the design, we can choose these different types of buttons. So you can see all these different buttons we've got down here. So if I wanna go for like a rounded button, which would work better with this, I can click rounded. Then I can click in here. Notice it says no action set. That's because you can set an action. So you can actually send them to a link, another page or to a funnel, like I was saying earlier. So inside here now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna change this font um, size. I think I'll change this to like a Pacifico. So instead of scrolling right through, I'm just going to, if you know the name of your font, you can put, start the font off, Pacif, and it'll come up. You can click that and it'll appear in there. I'm going to change that font color to a white. And I'm going to change the border color, which you can't see because it's only a border thickness of one. I'm going to change this border thickness to four. That's going to be thicker. And I'm going to change that to white as well. So there we go, we got it white. So now I want to change this kind of spacing in here. So if I go down and open this little tab up, it says padding. So I can set this to a different padding. So padding is, imagine a box. So if something's inside the box, okay, the padding is the inside width of the, where it hits the item. That's the padding. So outside of it would be the spacing, what's outside of it. So it's inside the box, padding, outside the box, spacing. That's a good way to remember it. So in here, I'm going to set this to five. I'm going to set this to five. And then I'm going to give it a little bit more padding left and right. So I think I'm going to go up to about 70 on this and 70 there to make it longer. So you can see I can set that exactly the size I want to. I can also bring the font size up here. So I think I'll make it a little bit bigger, set it to 45. And... There we go. And I can also change that text in there. So I'm going to go to settings now and I'm going to go join the fun. There you go. And now you're going to see underneath here, we have this thing called subtext. So you can actually drop subtext in underneath. Do you see it coming in there? And uh, if I click off of it, it'll make it clearer. 
see that subtext. Now I can change that subtext size as well. So you're, I know you're thinking, oh, that's really small, but you can actually go in under style and go down to the subtext size, which is here, and you could increase that. So if I wanted to increase that to 25, I can make it bigger there. Okay, so we give you that option to be able to put subtext. Generally, I don't use that. That's my own personal opinion. And uh, inside here, actions, we also have open a pop-up. So if you've got a pop-up set up here, you can activate it. So when they click that, the pop-up comes up. You can also submit a form if you wanted to, if you've got a form in there. Uh, and you can choose this one. This is the most familiar one, go to a link. So you could send them wherever you want to. Put the link in there, save it, and it's done. Now to preview this, as it's an unpublished page, you'll notice when you first save the page, you're gonna get this SEO settings come up. So we expect you to SEO your page at this stage. You can do it later, I'm gonna click done. If you wanna get back to SEO, you can come up here and go back into the SEO settings and you can reset it back up. But I've saved it now. So once you save it and you saved it, you won't get that thing come up and you can preview it by clicking here. So click in here and you get a preview of that page. There we go. That's all done. So that's how we can set up an image in there and set an overlay within that image. So I'm going to check in the chat, see if any questions have come up on that particular subject. No, everyone's fine. Maybe you're all having your lunch now. <laughs> I think I think it's one of those uh, those times, isn't it? 1153. So uh, again, really change things so quickly in here i mean you go into the settings and you can go right i want to change the overlay color i don't like that orange i want to change it to more of a blue and i want it to feed through a bit more you can change it there uh, you can also say oh that's too big so i want to close that up and i want to close make that nearer the top you can do that in there if you want more positioning in here so i wanted to push this a little bit further away i can come into the settings there i can go down to bottom spacing and i can push it remember outside the box is spacing and then of course i'd probably do the same with this as well so i could select this come into here and push this away by spacing at the top to make it a little bit more balanced inside there right so the other great thing you can do with this is you could duplicate it so if i have a few of these blocks set up i can click the duplication it's going to come up in here i've just put begonas in there which is not good so let's change that over let's go let's change this to intermediate and this shows you how quick you can do this stuff so i can come in here and then i can say i'm going to use a kind of traffic light system so it's going to be amber this color going to be orange there we go and i'm going to change this image out so i'm going to choose another image so i'll click the image there i'm going to scroll down to one of our images that we've got of a more experienced surfer which is him there i'm going to change i don't like the position of that so i'm actually going to go Yeah, I'll do it top center and then I'll give it a little bit more space here. And there we go, created another block. Now, what if you want to reuse these blocks in another page? If you're on the Pro and Premium, you have the ability over here to save the blocks out. So if I click save, I can type in a name of a block, intermediate. And let's call it block, just so, there we go. So I've saved that block and now I'm going to come up the top and I'm going to save this one as well. I'm going to call it beginners. So I'm going to go in here and we're going to go to beginner block. And so you might spend a bit of time creating these blocks, especially if they're more sophisticated blocks. Uh, and you might want to just save them out to reuse them in other pages. So I'm going to delete these blocks out now that I've saved it. And you're actually going to see that we have the block saved. So you know, you might be, ah, you can always go back, by the way, by using the undo there. And you can also go through the version history there and unwind. We've given you a few ways to be able to get back on yourself uh, because we know the importance of people making mistakes and wanting to go back. Uh, and being able to easily in this platform is something that we have worked on. So I'm going to go into blocks here. I'm going to go down to the custom blocks. And what you're going to see is those new blocks that I set up 
they are actually in here. You can see them down here. These are ones I've previously done. So you can see how I've reused some of these things, especially like forms. So now I can come in here really quickly and I can start to build my page out because I've got all my blocks. So it allows me to really quickly go in and be able to change these things. So I can go in here and I've already got some blocks already done. So I'm actually going to be putting those blocks in. So I can go up there, release that. And I'm going to put a form down the bottom because I've already got a block made up for it. So I'm going to go down to the last block here. This is a block. I'm going to drag it across to the bottom. And now I have an inline form here. And that looks good. Come in here and place this color. I'm going to put up a kind of red behind there. And then I probably change the tag for this. This is an actual form as well. So you're going to see under the settings here, I've actually got a tag applied to it. So when users come in, they have that tag applied to them. So if this was a new page, I'd probably put a new tag on here, um, call it uh, live and then hit enter. And then I've got, they would come in as live there on the tag. And you can see other tags that I've already done. You can see them there, they're listed. So I could always use the same one. Now also, by the way, any forms that you create, you can send people directly into a funnel. And you can also send them into an email list if you have one set up as well. So these can be extra things that you do. So you're filtering people when they come in on a form, you're tagging them. You can send them into an email list and you can also send them into a funnel. And that funnel can then send automated emails out to them. And we'll talk about funnels later, like I said, but this is a really powerful way of being able to segment your email list really, really quickly using Zender. OK, so. That is how we can do it. We also have one last thing in here uh, inside the settings for this button. We have this post submit action. Well, what does that mean? That means after someone's hit the submit button, you can then send them somewhere else. So we've got a post submit submit link that will send them to a thank you page. So let's finally have a look at what we've created here in the space of a few minutes. Created a whole page that's ready to go. Do you see how quick it is there? So the longest part of the whole process, as I was saying right at the beginning of these of this first session, is the longest part of doing course creation or setting up your course and your site is you putting the content together. Because the rest of it can be put together really, really quickly inside of Zenla, as you've seen. So in session two, we're going to wrap up now. It's just coming up to 12 o'clock. We have Zalissa coming on at three. We've got Alice coming on at four. We've also got a tutorial, a full tutorial on funnels. OK, and looking at getting people in on funnels, setting up the pages, setting up automations, all these sort of things. I am here as usual um, answering your questions. If you have any questions, put them into the chat and then I can answer them directly. And uh, yeah, and then that will be the end of, I don't know how many days was in now we've done, we've done at least five or six. So uh, yeah, that's it for session one. Hope you've enjoyed it. Um, as always, like on the chat, if you decide that you want us to feature something on a day with Zenla that might be of interest to you, then just make sure that you just put it into the chat, you know, tag me in there and um, I can be like, yeah, that's a really good idea. And I can feature it in a day with Zenla. Uh, we want to make your life easier. So if you're having a problem with something, then let us know. I think in the next session, we're going to do some more live builds inside of Zenla as well, like we did um, in the last day with Zenla. So I will see you in three hours time until then i hope you've enjoyed this and if you're watching on replays give us the thumb up um, or put in any requests that you have or those sort of things if you want to write qu um, actual questions regarding the platform or you have any questions for us then join us at three o'clock in the next live stream onto facebook group and we will answer the questions rakesh normally pops up as well in the afternoon so um, he'll be answering questions on there as well so you have the CEO actually answering your questions. What platform does that? OK, guys, um, wishing you a great rest of the day, evening, morning, wherever you're from. And I'll see you very soon.